Welcome everybody to episode 79 of the ADV podcast and boy oh boy do we have a jam-packed episode for you today. Did you know that Squid Game is sparking a revolution in China? Well, of sorts. Yeah. Uh, we'll be covering that. That'll be the topic of the day, but we actually have so many things to cover in this episode, most of them quite funny. Yes, so, so let's enjoy. just saunter into what's new. So let's do it. What's news when we talk about what's new in China? Uh, and well, we've got quite a lot to do today. So let's first of all talk about drones. Um, now, this is pretty interesting thing. Everybody knows um, DJI specifically has been incredibly successful. I used to, well, in fact, we went and made a speech at the DJI headquarters in Don't Shenzhen. Don't even know why we did that. Well, it's because uh, a friend of mine, uh, an ex-student of mine actually worked, worked, at, that's right, that's worked right. at DJI and was a really nice guy. He was so, nice you know, guy. like seriously good guy. Um, and he lent a drone to me for a while, remember, as That's part right. of that whole thing. So, you know, whatever. Anyway, uh, as part of a lot of celebrations now, they put on these very spectacular drone um, displays. So what it is, is it's pretty straightforward. They have a drone, which has a light on it. And then they program the drones to move in a certain formation in the sky. So they can spell out letters and words and draw pictures and stuff in the sky. And it looks pretty cool. So the thing is, um, it doesn't always work out, as you, one would expect. Yeah, so, well, so they use one signal, right? And they program them ahead of time. So yeah. I, I did see a lot of people in the Twitter comments talking about how they thought there was individual pilots for each drone. Mm -mm -mm. No, it's a computer program, <laughs> and it sends out one signal, and it's all <clears throat> choreographed. Yeah, I'll tell you what, they're, they're actually programmed be beforehand. <clears throat> so I actually just want to tell you what this celebration was for before we run the clip. Yeah, because for those of you who can't see this, in the background we've got some writing written in the sky mm -hmm. uh, in blue... It's in little blue dots, which are the drones themselves. So, yeah, what were you going to say? So, this was put on for Meng Wanzhou, which is the CFO of Huawei. She was just released mm. from... Hostage diplomacy. Hostage yeah. diplomacy, released from Canadian custody and sent back to China. She landed in Shenzhen after more than a 1,000 days on bail, awaiting extradition charges in Canada. And guess what local officials did in Zhengzhou? They released 300 drones to welcome her home. And let's see what happened. Zhengzhou is pretty far away from Shenzhen. I don't know how she's supposed to see it. <laughs> I guess uh, she'll see it here. Yeah, anyway, so... I know she's yeah, a big fan of the show. Let's see what happened. Well, the drones started falling out of the sky <laughs> onto the crowds below. <laughs> ah, no! <laughs> run, run. Actually, if you hear the Chinese, you can hear people, some people say, Shemian Feida, which means it's free. <laughs> and like some people running to pick them up. They Thomas was Shemian Feida, really? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure someone said that. Oh, that's funny. Anyway, the fact of the matter is uh, you can see that the drones are coming crashing down, which is not what you want. Uh, I don't think anyone got hurt, so don't worry. No, no. They can't, they're coming down at a reasonable speed. Yeah. Uh, so that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, they blamed a rival, a rival company or something to... Well, put, you can never take blame in no, China, right? Turns out that the police, they did a, an inspection and found out that it was operator error. So it was, no shit. Yeah. What do you anyway, think it yeah, was? Yeah, sure. Anyway, uh, tell us what's happening here. It's kind of hilarious. Uh, so a patron of ours, he sent us some images and video from a mini light protest they did at a consulate in Munich, Germany. So this is the consulate for China. Um, and they put up these light things that say boycott the Beijing Olympics 2022 with Winnie the Pooh. And they had this. I love these light displays because it's not graffiti, right? Yeah. You're not damaging property. No. I don't believe in damaging property. Me neither. And um, they have it's this got Winnie the Pooh. Actually, let me get us out, out of there. You can actually see he's got. They had little animated things of Winnie the Pooh and Winnie must burn. <laughs> Winnie must <laughs> burn. Out the fire. <laughs> and that's it's, on the console. It's pretty funny. It's on it's the console. It's good trolling. Yeah. It's good. No genocide games. Smash the CCP. Yeah. Uh, free the Uyghurs. Free Hong Kong. Free Tibet. So that yeah. was pretty. We thought that was. Uh, that's just a nice, it's a nice it's, way to protest. That's a good way to protest because you're not doing any real damage, no. but it's really hilarious that it's actually on... On the Chinese consulate, yeah. which is great. It's a government enterprise. You're not targeting people, you're mm. targeting the CCP. Taiwan is a country. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's right under... Yeah, no, it's right, no, it's right on the top of the... <laughs> it's amazing. You know, this must make them so mad because mm. you're just absolutely, you're not allowed, you're absolutely not allowed to say this or write this or project this anywhere in China. No. You're not allowed. It's against no, this the This is on government, Chinese government. But once you're in this consulate, you're yeah. on Chinese soil. Yeah. So, so this is the CCP endorsing this. I message. know. It's kind of hilarious. It's, <laughs> it's one of my favorite things. Oh, boy. Yeah. Anyway, so it's just kind of interesting revolution now. Yeah. Free Hong Kong, all that kind of stuff. Good so that's stuff. pretty good. Yeah. Um, 
And the next thing that we're going to talk about, let me just bring it up in the background. By the way, this footage behind us is recent. Oh, it's very in recent. In the past few days. Yep. Yep. Uh, You're it's a bit about out of frame, my friend. It's about a week. I am out of frame. Let me move. Let's move. Let me move over. Sorry. Um, yeah, for those of you who are curious about what we play in the backgrounds, we tend to, we've got quite a number of people that are in China that send us uh, fresh footage from time to time. Yeah. Some good friends of ours. And they're Chinese people, so they blend in, which is the best part. Yeah. So they don't get harassed most of the time when filming these things, which is cool. So let me set this up. Hmm. This is something I thought was so deliciously funny. What this stuff's you... a weird. I, I mean, it's cool, but it's weird. It's I, like... I had it in Vietnam, remember? Mm. But it tastes different than the one in America. The one in America is much better. It's much more well, light. This this I had in Hong Kong, but not the zero sugar one, the mm. real sugar one. The, like, you know, the That's healthy one. That's too sweet. The healthy one. <laughs> yeah, because it's not chemicals, it's sugar. It's not like... Oh, my this... God. No, no, Here we no, go. no joke, but this fake sugar that they use, Not, I'm not saying it's terrible, but it was like, what was it being... The guy was trying to make like an industrial lemon into Aspartame something. Aspartame, is. it's been proven 100% I, I know, it's just kind of interesting when you sure. find out what it was actually supposed yeah, to yeah. be. It's... What did he and do? He did he taste like it. taste yeah, it? Yeah. It's like, oh, he this industrial it. lemon, let's eat. Yep. Mm, that's and then they sweet. FDA approved it. It's literally, you have to eat, eat kilograms of it before it hurts you. Of course, I'm not, yeah. anyway, we digress anyway, too much. Tell, yeah. tell us what's going on. So China mm. Mobile is one of the biggest uh, government-owned cell phone companies in China. Mm. They do the 5G stuff. Yep. Anyway, long story short, they are part of the surveillance uh, kind of routine in China. So everywhere you go in China, I saw some misinformation the other day. Yeah. China was trying to say that America has more camera, like surveillance cameras per capita on its citizens than China does. What the hell? <laughs> China, has, China has one camera for every seven citizens in the, in the country. Yeah. It's tied to the local police stations, which is tied to the central government. Sure. And what they're doing is trying to make a huge network for the, in, in, in the end, for the social credit system, which has only been rolled out in certain cities, right? Right. It's supposed to be a nationwide thing. They're testing it in certain cities. Sure. But what they do is they set up this surveillance network, and they're trying to brag that they're keeping cities safe because of the surveillance. So what China Mobile did, which is a government, keep in mind, it's not a private company. No. A government branch is saying that they can look, they can look at citizens and prevent crimes by speaking to them through the camera. Now, okay, before we even play this. Yes. A lot of people have probably seen this because it's been floating around. I'll put it in the background. And it's it's a bunch of bollocks. First of all, you're never going to have the manpower to man every single camera to look at every single citizen. Maybe in a very small town, you'd be able to pull this off, which is what they're showing here, a very small town. Still, the setup they have is so jank. We're just going to show you, and we'll talk as we go along. So let's see what's going on here. Hey, wait. Look at this room. Yeah. So... Yeah, what's going on here? The guy was cutting down a tree. Illegally, yeah. It's like, <laughs> what are you doing? Get out so he runs off. This, yeah. <laughs> they had all these cute things so, in here. Here's a village official. I gotta say, he looks like a village official. He's exactly that what they is, look like. Uh, you know what's funny is that usually they'll get someone like handsome to pretend to be to no, show that's a fantasy. A, that's a, that's real. a real village official. They always wear those like kind of fake leather jacket type And those striped sweaters yeah, yeah, yeah. or the, la the boss shirts. Yeah, Laban shirt. Yeah. Anyway, he's like, stop. You can't cut down trees illegally. He's like, this is my own tree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's just telling him the fine details of having to have a license, you know, to cut down trees. So now, now come with me to the, you know, council department. Okay, to, so I want to point something out here. Right. Before, okay, everyone, you have to know this is fake, right? This video yes. is not fake. This is made to make people believe this is how it this really is. This is not how it, how it is. They don't have the technology to do this, but they're trying, right? Yeah. So what's this proof is, of concept kind of thing? This is kind of terrifying to me because what they're doing is using this is positive. This yeah. is considered positive. Like an American out there will be watching this and say this is an actual Black Mirror I like, nightmare. I like the fact that it's a uh, peaceful village 2.0. Well, I was going to get into that. Yeah. <laughs> so the average Westerner will say, "Hey, this, this is like Black Mirror. This is horrifying, right?" But the average Chinese person in the village will say, well, guess I won't commit crimes now, right? This is what the motivation is, sure. right? To brag about technology. But look at this room. Mm -hmm. This is such a local village CCP room, yes. if I ever did see one. Mm -hmm. And it's running like lines down it. It's got shit all over the wall. Yeah. It's 
just this is Jank. such a CCP room. They got some random like cheap TV stuck on the wall as a monitor, and this yep. woman sitting at a desk with her cup of tea and a plant. Yes. Um, anyway, let's see what she says next. <laughs> So for those of you uh, listening at home, she's calling out a, a, a middle-aged woman. She's like, hey, auntie, what's that in your hands? Stop hiding so, it. Yeah, don't you dare hide it. I already saw it. <laughs> Please sort your garbage. Please sort your garbage. She's Can like, I say what a fallacy mm. it is to assume that anyone in China is sorting their garbage? Yeah. You remember the bins, right? I, I, I made a video about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, explain. In China, it's kind of interesting. And I, I guess there was a green initiative at some point where they were like, we want to become like the first world. We want to become like an international thing. We want to prove that we can do it. So they, in all the cities, the big cities, you have a recyclable and a non-recyclable bin next to each other, even in public places. Nobody follows those rules. People just throw in whichever one's closest, okay? I mean, on top of that, like... I've got footage of a bin where on the one side it says recyclable, non-recyclable, right? You go on the other side, they've switched it around. So it says recyclable on the, the front, but on the back it says non-recyclable. So it doesn't matter which, if you, you know. I've also seen ones that have one bin in them. Yeah. And it and says it just, they're separated on yeah. the outside. And the worst part is, is when the people come to collect the trash, they throw it all in the same bin <laughs> yeah, anyway. Yeah. It all goes, if you watch the, the collections, it all goes in I've the got same a, I've got a whole yeah. video about it you know, on my channel, whatever it's called, something about garbage. This is like a straw man thing where they're like, Oh, mm. she's maybe breaking the rules about sorting garbage, but at least we sort garbage. No, 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 there's no, no, no garbage. No. Anyway, just uh, kind of like they know birds. Yeah. I got a dude who's this, this poor hardworking yeah. guy, by the way. What is this? This is where the propaganda starts. He's got a bench full of tools. I got to say, just he's, how they've set this up. He's, got he's this, not working in the workshop. He's got a bench full of tools, which, by the way, look like air tools. There's no compressor or anything nearby. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He's got a crappy uh, yeah. little cabinet and he's nailing a nail onto the back of it. Yes. So he's like, hey, Master Xiao, she's saying. What does she say next? Xiao <laughs> Actually, those are electric power tools, and there's no electric <laughs> outlet <laughs> anywhere near there. There's not an extension or anything. You know what there is, though, is a pile of burning garbage that they cleared yes, out there. Can it takes you see me out of the, the picture. Side? Yeah, can you see where they... <laughs> it's they, where they you know they burned Yeah, that's it right where there. they burnt the garbage, yeah. Okay. <laughs> She's saying, oh, you're working this late. And then he says, yeah, I'm working late because we need to do more work so that our life will get better. That's what people say. Yeah. Only by joint efforts can we achieve the rural vitalization project. Here's where the CCP propaganda comes Yeah, I mean, in. who says that? This is, you don't talk about rural vitalization no. when, when you're on an overlord <laughs> camera. <laughs> mm, but good rest is also important. Don't forget to get yourself too tired. You don't don't you get yourself too tired. You know what I'm going to do? What? The next time that mail truck comes down the, the long driveway and I have this surveillance camera, yes. I'll be like, mail lady, how are you today? <laughs> oh, you're working so hard. Thank you for contributing to our national mail project. Let's see what she says. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, look, she's got a bunch of folders on her desk and they're, they're labeled Target Poverty Alleviation Project Files. Yeah. Okay. So that's Xi Jinping's campaign for targeted poverty alleviation. Oh, this yeah. is what I do in my spare time. Mm. So she's like, ooh, let me open this This up. is CCP propaganda that's fine. This. Yeah. So she's reading that while she's looking at the cameras. Yeah. Oh, what has she got yeah. here? Okay, now we got a farmer. He's like doing the rice field, rice paddy thing. She's like, Mr. Liu, how are your plants this year? Good. Next year will be a great harvest. By the way, all the people complaining that we're reading these, this is for our audio listeners, by the way. Absolutely. Don't they forget, don't understand. It's also a podcast as well yeah, as video. Yeah. It's mainly video, but you can yeah. listen to it on Spotify and all that. <laughs> our government is strongly supporting our agriculture. <laughs> there is quite a lot of financial support. That's what you That's say what randomly. That's what you say. After you say, how's your crops going? And then you have to throw in the propaganda. Yeah, These are just like, slogans she's reading. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Okay, let's see what he says. <laughs> I thank the government. <laughs> Thanks for village officials care. This is a real propaganda video put out by the CCP guys. Yeah. Get that in your head. Yeah. I just think it's, imagine this random farmer has a drone or whatever it is talking to him. Yeah. 
And he's like, I thank the government. Thank yeah. for the village officials care. You know what? That's not far from the truth because when you're under surveillance like that, you probably have to say you that. You have to say that, yeah. No thanks. We villagers are all family. And it's like, uh, 一家人, <laughs> you see no that? No thanks means like, don't, like, you're welcome, basically. And they put the stupid bubble up there, which is like, we're family. <laughs> we're all family. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Ooh, and he waves off like, great, leave me to my work. Into the village. Thumbs up. We, we see, see fields, fields of, of hope, hope on, on fertile, fertile lands. lands. Hmm. There are <laughs> diligent farmers struggling for a good life. United and work together for the rural vitalization project. And now you know what this actually was. Yes. Was propaganda to scare villagers into participating in the rural vitalization project. Yeah. We're keeping an eye on you. You rural villagers think you can get away with just living your hard lives. Yeah. Like their lives are brutal. Yeah. These people. It's it's horrible. It literally says smart speakers help to build a peaceful village. That's the slogan. 1984 in real life. It's yeah. literally 1984. It is. The thing the good news is that despite all of this being propaganda, that was, you know, that was very staged how they put that on. It's just yeah. some woman in it with a TV in there and they put footage on it. But anyway, sure. That's what they're trying to do, though. They're yeah. absolutely working on smart speakers, 100%. No, I mean, they, they already do have. Yeah, oh, they Remember do. Remember they have those drones. That they do. When, during the pandemic where they were, like, chasing Put on people your back in their house. Yeah, yeah like, get in your house or you'll die. There was also a lot of propaganda. Yeah, a lot of that was fake, mm. too. But anyway, but the, it is, that, that is a motivation for this, right? Mm. Scare the villagers into so People being are saying part that, of that the music they used is stolen from an anime. Was it? Yeah. That's a CCP video. That's yeah. not even a local video. That's Dude, a CCP they do it video. all the time. Yeah. Remember the Shenzhen Metro was playing the, the Star Wars cantina music that... They were playing that in the Shenzhen Metro. You know? Play the same song again. <laughs> they played that on Running Man. Yeah, as well. I mean, it's just so annoying, the fact that they, they use, like, just... They use the Akira it's, soundtrack. It's for propaganda, too. It's like... Yeah. Top government officials go, can you put together this video or whatever? And they're like, shit, I well, love for this. For people that I hate, love hate Japan so much, they certainly like to use <laughs> Japanese music in their own domestic propaganda. Yes, yes. It's kind of a face lust thing right there. Correct. Anyway, guys. I thought you guys uh, would, would enjoy that. Should we take... No, we're going to do this uh, whole policing before we hit the... Uh, let's main. do a couple super chats. Okay, we'll do a couple super chats. Uh, Jonathan Lau says, views on my, Mark Milley calling uh, China treason. Oh, uh, that's the, the general thing. We're, we haven't commentated on that because we don't know what the circumstance is for that. But if he did, out of, you know, if he broke the rules, then he needs to, he needs oh, to suffer punishment. Oh, is that punishment. stupid general that, like, phoned China? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's treason. Yeah, but, I mean, me go, to court, like, go to court for it. Me not personally, like, you know, when you've got a high-ranking general calling an, a, a potential enemy nation to tell them your plans of, you know, military, whatever, that's a no-no. Of course, but that needs to go to court. Then. And you don't, like you know go above the heads of your leaders correct that no matter who they a, are needs a fair trial though yeah he needs a fair trial to be found as a treasonous piece of shit <laughs> yeah just saying i don't know the guy at all but sure. like the fact that he called his counterpart correct. We, in, but in we Beijing. don't know all the details yet. yeah we don't true. report on stuff we don't know no that's true so but we'll yeah, uh, i agree yeah. with the sentiment though. yeah the sentiment is don't be a traitorous piece of shit correct or you might end up uh, being a floppy head vegetable lord you might yeah uh power shift i imagine the with the huge economic downturn power outages and civil unrest throughout china i'd be surprised if the ccp didn't start a regional war to distract and galvanize its citizens bye bye she well you're kind of right. I would not say bye bye Xi, and I do not think there's civil unrest. No. Actually, I can say there is not civil unrest. No, about there isn't. That. Uh, but we, me, Winston and I were just talking about this in the car. Mm. Um, we do think that if there is a regional conflict, it's a, it's probably put on because they're trying to distract the domestic populace from a downturn in economic growth. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's the only thing that makes sense. It might, you know, the thing is, if there's more exacerbation of this, all the issues in China right now, it might actually drive Xi and the CCP to actually strike and create a, a conflict in order to take away from it, if it gets bad enough. So we're hoping it doesn't. Correct. Yeah. So we get on to the fake police thing? Uh, sure. Okay. So, you know, um, now, full disclosure, I have not watched this. This There's an interview on CNN where apparently there's... Um, yeah, this came up right before we went on. It's so. been out for a couple of days, but you know, CNN... I'm saying for us. Yeah. We didn't... Yeah. Uh, basically, it's a police dude mm. from China who is involved in torturing Uyghurs. And so he's like a whistleblower and he's a dissident. So he came to the States and he's now, you know, going, doing the rounds and telling about, you know, the things he did. 
That's so, not the point. So that's not the point. The fact of the matter is, some people have been trying to discredit the guy. Some people? Uh, a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mainly CCP sycophants and shills. Now, right. the fact of the matter is, I'm not going to sit here and say that he's 100% legit. I don't know anything about the guy. I haven't yeah. even watched the interview. But when people start to try and pick apart these little details to try and prove someone wrong, because they do that to you and me all the time, I start to look into it. Me too. So you got sent this... Um, yeah, so so this is a, a tweet coming from one of the CCP sycophants. There's this other guy named Noel or whatever. He was, mm-hmm. he was on there as well. But these guys, these shill yeah. dudes, they started to send around all of these things that uh, tried to make this guy... This mm-hmm. guy. Hey, pull up the interview. Pull up the interview. Do we have it? Yeah, we do. Let's Just scroll, scroll forward. Yeah, let's scroll see. forward. Okay, I'll have to scroll forward a little. Give me a second. So we need context. Like, I don't want everyone to be guessing who we're talking about. Oh, yeah, okay, here we this go. Guy, here. Yeah, yeah. If you just could have just, him up there. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just get him in the back. Give me a second. Confessions from ethnic. Okay, so yeah. So this this is the whistleblower dude. This right? is who we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So this interview comes out on CNN, and I get all these tweets at me that are like, they're blaming us. They're like, CNN got a fake whistleblower. You guys are so retarded. I can't believe you would believe in such a such a dupe. They're trying to dupe us, right? Yeah. It's psyop stuff. It's fake. It's all this kind of stuff. So uh, immediately, Winston and I were talking. We we're like, "What? Wait, wait a second. Yeah. Wait a second. Because at first, I was like, "Hey, maybe they're onto something." Yeah. So I look at it. Well, go okay. Back. Th- th- this is the reason. The the reason they say that he's fake is they say that the uniform that he's wearing. Yeah. Just read the tweet. Is okay. It says. <clears throat> Police in Chinese is Gong An. This fake univer- um, Gong Zhi. Yeah, this fake uniform is Patriot's Gong Zhi, which has no meaning at all. Right. Even people who don't know Chinese can tell the difference. Next, CNN should do better homework on making propaganda. Also, there's a decent chance this guy is just trolling CNN. So what they're saying is the patch on his arm doesn't say Gong An. Okay, it says which, Gong Zhi. But Gong An means. Um, uh, security. Public, security. public security yeah gong you know gong 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 yeah. gong teacher is a is a bus it just yeah. means a public gong bus public, yeah. uh, you know hua hua gong zi is a is a playboy yeah the flower flower public thing yeah that's pretty much what it <laughs> translates into anyway a gong ji is oh yeah. that's, different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's different anyway the fact of the matter is um gong an oh whatever the the hell it is we're going to take a look so they're saying that his patch and this is the the example they use They've taken a screenshot, and guess what? They've actually photoshopped it. So when I saw, well, when I saw this, I was like, "Oh yeah, look at this! It's Gongzhi. That doesn't make any sense because so, I know that the uniform says Gong yeah, on. Exactly. So what I so did, I was like, "Hmm, is he?" I, I, I said because you were saying, "Oh, it yeah. looks like he's fake." So we pulled up the original interview. No, no it says Gong on. It says Gong on. You got to just look at it. The fact of the matter is, the lines that are there kind of make a little bit of a trick on the eyes. And if you're watching it in very low resolution, yeah, it doesn't look correct. But you can very clearly see. Because the the Chinese character for safety is kind of an interesting um, uh, symbol. It's yeah. got a picture of a woman. Well, it's a, it's a character of a woman underneath a roof. roof yeah. So it's like a woman is under a roof. It's That's safe. safety. Yeah. That means safety. So you can clearly see the character new new yeah for new whatever new. you say. So he's got those two little umlaut type things on it. Yeah. Okay, for woman, and then you know you've got the little house thing on top of it, and that is. Correct. It is going on. So, so they fo- the CCP shills photoshopped a picture to make it look raw. Yes. They either photoshopped it or took it from a very low resolution source. Well, it looks like it was manipulated. Yeah, yeah, it does. That's the problem. Yeah, because if we go back to the picture that they showed, because everybody, if you can take a look at the second character, okay, the, the, the un the character, um, if we go back to the one that they, f- where is it? The one they photoshopped here. You can see it looks sus. It does look like Gongzhi. It does. Yeah, it looks sus what they've done to it. Anyway, so the fact of the matter, they fail on that one. So they try to say that it's fake because of that patch. Yeah, um, Chinese people in the comments are saying it, it says Gong on. I can yes. confirm. Yeah, of yeah. course it says Gong Of course Gong it does. There's idiots. It. So, they're, so it doesn't end there, okay? <laughs> now here's the, here's the dumb part. Okay. Someone says, right, this guy doesn't even have a Chinese accent. Lol. Let's listen to him. Okay. Where is he? He's coming. Yeah. Let's come on. Where is he? I want to hear this guy. Where's his accent? Come on. This confessions is from ethnic Uyghurs in Xinjiang. Some cops would play the good cops, and some would play the bad cops. <laughs> After. <laughs> okay. Do you know why he doesn't have a, a Chinese accent? Because it's a translator. It's a dub. It's They dubbed over the translator. Of course he doesn't have... A Chinese accent, you morons. Okay, it gets there's, worse. There's more. It gets worse, okay? 
Let's go. So keep in mind for all of you that are just tuning in, there is a big plot from the CCP sycophants, like the yeah. China supporter, the Chinese government supporter type peoples, the, the ones that will apologize for all their mistakes, that really want to discredit this whistleblower. Yeah. And the only way they can do that is to try to say that his uniform is fake. Right, which, which we've disproven with the first thing. Yes. But then there's a second. What's in the other argument they're making? Okay, here, let's take a look at this. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to try This to... is what keeps getting tweeted at us. Okay, the devil is in the details. They say, because in the interview, it shows uh, his cuff, which yeah, says police, police in English. Yeah. So look, this is what they're tweeting out. It says, the devil is in the details. In China, it says, Jing Cha, not police. Well, these guys are absolute morons. You know why? Because actually, let's get a better one. Um, it does The Chinese say uniform does say police. So I was actually, this is where I was getting skeptical. I, when I was in China, I was thinking back when I was in China, I was like, the uniforms and the cuff absolutely said police Absol on it. Yeah. What are you talking about? So these people live in China right now. Yes. And they're trying to argue that it says Jing Cha, not police on their cuffs. So it's very Bullshit. easy. All we did is go to Baidu, which is, you it's, know. I typed in Zhongguo Jing Cha. That's yes. all I needed to type in. And it brings Zhongguo up. Jing Cha. Yeah, which is Chinese police. It brings up Chinese Zhufu, police. Yeah, uniform. Zhufu, yeah. And we got a whole bunch. Look, there's another dude sitting on a chair there in China. Says Chinese police. police. Says police on his cuff. So you see how, how pathetic these guys are. They always try to attack the person rather than try to attack the argument. Because, yeah. you know, they feel like if they can discredit the person yeah. by either labeling him a fake or a racist or whatever, that they can actually take away from what they're saying. Because they unfortunately realize that what they're saying is true. And there's no way they can argue against that. So not only have they gone after the cuff, okay? So we see the cuff over here. Um, th this is them doing... Uh, the doing devil's in the details. And look, at it, it's at CNN, at, at Serpent ZA, at Lao 86. Yes, they, they're at us. They're trying to say like, oh, look. These people live in China. Why do they you not know? You live there. You see police every day. This picture of the Jingcha, I've never seen it written Jingcha ever. Neither have I. So either that's fake. Or there are two versions of the uniform, which is totally understandable. You know, some it, areas definitely say Jing Cha. When, I guarantee it says yeah, Jing Cha. Sometimes in some you areas. see Te Jin or whatever. Yeah. You know, the thing is, the Chinese police system is a bit of a rambled up mess, to it be is. honest. It takes a long time before you get to tell the difference between a security guard, a traffic police person, um, you know, normal police, just Baoans, things like that. You know, just uh, what do you call those guys again? The urban management guy, Cheng Guan. You know, they all have their own uniforms and they all say police on them, by the way. Pretty much all of them have similar patches. So they're different variants. But the fact of the matter is that they are trying to discredit this whistleblower because of bullshit things that they're making up. The worst thing is, is a lot of these people know what they're doing. Yeah. They know that the, the uniform doesn't say Gong on. It says Gong on. They know that the uniforms do say police in China in some yes. of the regions. They know all this stuff. Now, another thing that they're saying is that his shoulder lapels, Yeah. that particular sh shoulder lapel you only get if you've done over 10, 10 years, years right, of yeah. service in the uh, police. Chinese police. And in the interview, he they didn't make it very clear how long he's had done service. And he said something like 10 years plus minus, something along those lines. So like, oh, well, he couldn't have got that if he hadn't been in there for longer than 10 years. Again, they're just making shit up and they're using his uniform as a way to try and say, oh, look, he's fake. But so far, the only thing they're proving is how moronic they are and how little they know the, about The problem China. is most people won't do what we're doing, like yeah. due diligence. Because we look at something like that and say, that doesn't, that, something doesn't check out here. Yeah. Living in China, we know that that's not the case. I've seen uniforms that say police. I know yeah. that it says going on. And that, that's, the, that's the thing. But though, they, they drown it out. It's diversion. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Because somebody who's just browsing Twitter or Reddit or something comes across this picture. And that's where they win. That's where this propaganda they, works. They'll look at this picture and say, oh, wow, well, yeah. yeah. This guy, this looks right. You know, they, they don't fact check. So no. they're probably like, yeah, it looks like CNN was faking it all along or this guy's faking it. Meanwhile, that is a legitimate Chinese police uniform that he's wearing. I don't, we don't like to talk about the shills because they don't deserve any more attention than they get. So we're not going to name drop anyone. But I do challenge you guys to come up with a rebuttal to this because yeah. that's just stupid. That's and weak you and know, lazy. You know, it makes you, you look like a piece of shit when you make stuff up. Yeah. It's, it's a lie. It's but, absolute lies. By the way, this is a, a Chinese police officer in Italy because you know they have Chinese police officers walking the street for training or whatever the hell it is. Look, yeah. it says police on his um, little cuff as well. Guess what? Just like we see this woman police officer with well, I mean, police just on her cuff. I do and look at this uniforms. male police officer with a police on his cuff. It's very simple. These police officers on the street in Shanghai 
with police on the cuff. Come it on, guys. In Guangdong, you... where we live, it says freaking police. And I know some areas say Jing Cha too. I'm yeah. sure they do. Absolutely. I remember the police more. Anyway, you know, I think we've hopped on about this one long yeah. enough. Well, proven, we proved you wrong yet again. Yes. So stop it's being not a dick. It's very difficult. No. Lying okay. ass dicks. They <laughs> They're just liars. Oh, um, yeah. I guess let's take a couple of um, super chats before we hit our main one. Sure. Kathleen Morrison says, uh, regarding power outages, is it changing that Chinese people's opinion of electric cars like Tesla? Um, maybe. Actually, that's a good, that's a good point. valid point. I don't know. Uh, Tacit Turn says, I tried my hardest to buy Winnie the Pooh stuffed animal that wasn't made in China. Apparently, Xi Jinping also likes his honey. <laughs> yeah. Code Tutor, I always miss these, but now I have COVID and think can think of doing nothing better to watch in my isolation. Holy shit, dude, like, get better. Get better, my man. Yeah. Or woman. Code Tutor. Uh, the Crying Tomato, greetings from Israel. Been following for years now, but this is my first time donating. Thank you for your informative content. Oh, it's Thank you very much. Pleasure. Free speech, respect there. Great show as usual, guys. The one thing that bothers me about internet censorship in China is that they don't know about the bird, which is the bald eagle. Don't know about the bird. I don't get it, but thank you. Okay. Hmm. Nate Fink, first time live. Great chat and podcast. Love from Michigan. They don't thank know you. about birds, period, because there are no birds in China. <laughs> Hauntus Farmer <laughs> says, thanks for the story behind the drone fail. Here's some support for the card. Thank, thank you, you very much, Hauntus Farmer. Hmm. And Ross Wolf says, let's celebrate the first time a Wumao attacked me personally. With broken English, they told me my English skills were worse than his students. It's the funniest thing I've ever read in weeks. I'm going to oh, rip through a couple of these so we don't have so many at the end. Okay. Taiwan is a country. Thank you very much. Yes. Power Shift says, no echo. How'd you do it, Winston? We just I messed around it. with that. Spiffy Rack, Taiwan is a continent. Interesting. Okay. Guru Kolochev says, I just bought Conquering Southern and Northern China. Thanks for all the great content. Oh, Thank I'm you for supporting glad. Us. I hope you enjoyed it. It's, we love them. Someone in the crowd just wanted to say hello uh, to Winnie the Furry and Milky the Brony. Uh, <laughs> today, I hope today's episode will be a blast as usual. Stay awesome. Don't be like Balsack. Oh, you know what that calls for. For those of you who don't know Peter Balsack, he is the, the person <laughs> responsible for colluding with the Chinese government to hide the spread of COVID. And he actually is the guy who got them, the Lancet to, got all these scientists to write a, a letter to the Lancet, a paper basically saying that it's very unlikely it came from a lab and that people that say it comes from a lab are conspiracy theorists. Mm -hmm. Can you, uh, what's his name again? That's right. That's yeah. right. Anyway, uh, the Indian dude says rather silly question. Since South that Korean culture has been on meteoric trajectory globally, that whole CCP doesn't want sissy boys in cinema. Isn't that uh, is it them concerned about Korean media influencing Chinese youth? Absolutely, yes, that's a part time. of it for big sure. Uh, Kate Taro, thank you very much. Uh, Korean culture has a massive impact on China right now. Yeah, but you know they they turn it around. Remember with the Thad missile yes. thing and they got people with smashing korean products yeah. smashing korean Does, stores doesn't matter the average yeah. young person in china loves they korean still love stuff. it but you know they turn it around all the time they do tyler durden uh australia plans to open its borders in december do you think chinese students will be going back to australia to study just like before or the recent crackdown prevent them i think it'll put a dent in it mm. juan pablo have you ever been to jinmen love from estonia yes i have and it's awesome really cool it's really crazy to be able to see china from taiwan uh free speech respecter uh, homeboy is gonna like get it all right let's move on okay it's time for us to hit soft power this is where we talk about how china is changing your mind and this time we're going to be including this whole squid game thing however we have to start with a bit of an argument that uh seamilk and i've been having okay it started out with show those remotes okay let me find those remotes wherever the heck they are um right yeah there. maybe you could you could, you explain what this is all about so in china you can buy all kinds of crazy stuff and this yes. is you know what this reminded me of they have these machines in china where you know like easy pass cards mm -hmm. like you put your money on there and you can drive through the toll gates you don't yes, have to stop yeah, yeah. they have those in china too they have these machines you can buy on the black market first they were just selling them openly on taobao yeah. but you go and scan someone's card and it takes the money yeah out you of can it. actually extract the money you know <laughs> out of their easy pass card, card. Yeah. yeah they also have these uh jammers that can help unlock doors so yeah. at rest stops when people get out of their car to go pee mm. they'll actually unlock people's cars and jack them there mm. very dangerous rest stops in china it's weird yeah so it depends where you go depends on where yeah, you go yeah. of course anyway they have this another uh, new rogue uh, piece of technology, and this is a jammer slash remote that can turn off speakers. Yeah. And what they're trying to do is people get really mad at these old ladies mm. that blast on these huge tinny speakers, yeah. really loud music, and do this choreographed dancing. Guan, yeah. Guan Chang Ai. Yeah, Guan Chang Wu. Guan Chang Wu, or mm. Guan Chang Ai, as we call yeah. them, the aunties that mm -hmm. dance. And people get sick of them. They have like, before they had these huge things where they'd blast noise at them or they'd shoot them with water. Yeah. Now they're turning off their speakers. And I was trying to say, it's kind of a dick move because 
I feel like old people getting together and exercising in China was actually a really nice attribute of the country. I thought that was a nice societal sure. aspect. Sure. So Winston disagreed. I disagree. Okay. There are now. This is a kind of a complicated topic. Okay. I'm going to show you something now. This is footage I shot uh, in the park. Okay. Um, first of all, let's take a look at this. I think this is kind of charming. Let's see. <laughs> See how nice this is? Yeah. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Really no, it's really good. It. I mean, this is typically not the kind of dancing they do. No, no, uh, no. But I, I wanted to show you this for a reason. Okay. It, this, this is when I first got to China. I used to go explore everywhere. I used to just walk everywhere at night, the whole night. And you'd see this kind of thing in the parks or in little squares. It's where lovely. They get together, do a bit of this kind of square dancing stuff, whatever you call this, ballroom dancing. They do uh, the tango, all sorts of things. And I thought this was kind of charming and nice. And now that side of it, I like a lot. Okay. What you're about to see next, everyone, and for those of you wearing earphones, turn your volume down just a little bit, please. Guan Chang, I, I, well, it's fine. It's fine. No, I maintain that. No, it's not, because I'm going to show you next what the I real... I get it. It's loud. Is, I get it. No, this is what people don't like. Okay, check this out. It's coming. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to stop it there for a second, okay? <laughs> because it sounds exactly like that. That is the real audio. When I filmed this, that's what you heard. They have these tinny speakers that are blown all the time. It's real life ear rave. Yeah, you, it sounds horrendous. Yeah. And it's always... Uh, okay, I it, get it. It's either this terrible... And I hate to say this because I don't want to mock or make fun of anyone's culture, but like Peking opera, Chinese opera, you know, that kind of very... It's horrendous sounding to the ears, Okay, maybe it's good in, if you watch it in a theater, but when you hear it like on these speakers, it's always that, you know, and then they've got these really loud. I'm like, used to the eyes doing the techno stuff. Yeah, that too. Okay. I'm going to get to that. But the fact of the matter is it's literally like people, I mean, children, when they get a hold of your pots and pans and they're like smacking them together. That's what it sounds people like. People are very upset about no, the No, seriously. Rave. Yeah, yeah, like, like this. <laughs> Okay. Okay. This is te the techno stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. Now this this is not kind of normal. I filmed this in the park as well. Yeah. Um. And this. I is, maintain this is fine. No. I no. Mean, this part I'm gonna say is fine. Okay. This is like the in the morning you go to the park. People yeah. are doing their exercises. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Let's just watch this for a second. I feel like it's an advantage of China over other societies that the old people are quite active and doing their well, dances and stuff. I mean, look, you 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 have to take everything into context. Okay. I see people jogging all the time, taking the dogs for a walk in the West. It's a different kind of a thing. You are stuck in a tiny apartment in the cities in China. Yeah, the yeah. only exercise sure. you ever get is if you go down and do these kind of things. You're right. You know what I mean? You're right. So this is important for old, especially older people to keep their joints active. And, to, sure. and I approve of this, by the way, what we're seeing here. So get together in the park. They wear the same uniform. You know? Now, I kind of wanted to show this because I thought this was kind of funny. <laughs> the emotion, okay, that's attached to what people do. This oh, exercise. it's very utilitarian. No, but I'm just saying it's, it's incredibly emotional. Let's take a look. This music oh, yeah. It's like jam, dude. Yeah, okay, I turned the volume down. But you have to understand that this stuff blasts very loudly. I know, I know. So if you're living right next to this park. Yeah, that's you, the problem is if you're living next to it. You hear it in yeah. your freaking window. Anyway, I just I had to film the the absolute emotion on this man's face while I was there. I thought he's, he's like, quite the leader. I thought he's really getting into the groove here. What a it was boss! Pretty fantastic. I'm huh? I'm a bit concerned at this dance. There, there's nothing happening here. Well, something like he gets into it. Does he move? Yeah, a little bit. Just wait for him. He's it, like on this loudspeaker. It actually like barks out an order to like change your arm movement. Before anyone thinks you're harassing this guy, this is for a Chinese TV show where you were being filmed. No, I actually was harassing this guy. <laughs> no, seriously. No, I wasn't harassing. I was filming him, filming him because the Chinese TV uh, crew wanted to sh follow me around on my average day. Mm. And this was part of my average day. <laughs> Sorry, go people in a park. Just go, just because you know, I I enjoy that kind of thing. Yeah. It's different culture, and that's what yeah. my videos are all about: sure. is showing people what China's like. So I go to the park, and hey, this is interesting. So. 
I was just explaining to them, like, I find this very interesting. So I was filming it. They were filming me filming, filming you. it. Yeah. They actually were harassing people. They were. They, they were, were like, like yeah. up in the people's yeah. faces and stuff. I right. was zooming in. I, I didn't walk up to You were being polite about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, they were, like, moving people around Yeah, they shit. actually, like, moved people, yeah. like, stand there and film. <laughs> anyway, it's kind of funny. I've got all that on camera, too. Um, now, here you get more of that techno-ass junk. And oh, give me that techno-ass junk. Listen, you got to see... What people are complaining about well you got to see like does that look like it's early morning or it's no like, it's, it's, it's late. late at it's night late. It's like this 11. was 11 30 p.m that 11. i filmed 30, this yeah. okay so let's take a look <laughs> quality speaker that's the problem that's the audio right okay i did not change anything that's what the, the sound sounded like i filmed that on my camera had a de decent microphone in it now that is going on right underneath residential buildings that's the problem okay so surrounding this kind of square are these it. people high, get pissed high rises everywhere and that's 11 30 at night and guess what it goes on later than that yeah i would be pissed if my kid is trying to sleep and yeah, stuff yeah and yeah and you've got this freaking horrendous noise outside your window and there's no soundproofing in the in the buildings in China, if you notice. They don't put, like, double glazing on the windows down south. No. And, you know, the concrete it just vibrates through. So it you're does. just hearing that the entire night. <laughs> so, um... You're bringing me back. I just got to say, I sympathize with these people, okay, that come with these remotes to try and shut their speakers down. I would do the same. I used to sabotage, like, when they were, they were doing the Zhuang show in my building. With yeah, the when they were doing it off of the, the yeah. normal hours. Yeah, I would go and turn the building power off. Oh, uh, yeah. And then I, they would just I use jackhammers. Yeah. I mean, like, actual sledgehammers yeah. used by hand. And I was like, what is? what am I even doing? <laughs> or one time, I um, got so pissed mm -hmm. off because there was this apartment right above me that they kept doing this. Yeah. And I was like, I cannot handle this because they would start at, like, 6.37 in the morning, okay, with jackhammers yeah. and whatnot. I was so pissed off. So I went down to the local locksmith. And I bought a key, okay, just a normal like a blank key. Then I bought super glue. Then I went, put slathered <laughs> super glue all over the key. Went up at like one in the morning or something. Went up to that apartment, stuck it in the keyhole. The slathered super glue key broke it off. Nice. And threw the rest of it away, so they couldn't get into the place in the morning. Nice. But they just bashed the door down and oh continued. Oh my gosh! Yeah, <laughs> so. I, they woke up my. They're only supposed to operate like post eight p.m. Yeah, or eight a.m. or something. And they, supposed to stop at like five thirty or six. Yeah, they woke up my newborn at three a.m. After I'd already told them multiple times not to do this, and I, I can't tell you what happened next. Yeah, but that yeah. was infuriating. So I get it. I get I, it. I once went because they they were doing it on Saturday. They're not supposed to do it on the weekend. Just above me. And they wouldn't stop. And I was just like hung over. And I hear this because they're using spades and stuff. And I ran up. And there they were. The owner was there too, like overseeing the what's going on. And I uh, ran yeah. up and I grabbed their tools. Yeah. I said, and he's like, come on. Ran I grabbed their tools, their spades and shit. And I ran out. And I ran to the, the like the, the whatever you call it, that Guanli Fei office. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I ran there. And I was like, these guys are doing it at this time. Here, keep their tools. You're not to give it back to them until like right. Monday morning or whatever. Right. They weren't happy with me. They tried to, they chased me. Because they know? break the rules. Yeah, Bullshit. and they think it's okay. And you know what's sad is everyone else is, all the Chinese people are mad too. Yeah. Right? So we have to go and speak on everyone's behalf. Yeah, and I be know, the but I was like, screw that. I got cement, wet cement all over my clothes and stuff because I was taking, I was there in my boxer shorts or whatever. It was really it. I remember you telling me about yeah, that. Yeah, that's crazy. That's funny. Anyway, anyway um, so let's get on to the actual main part of the show. Sure. Mm. So... Um, yeah, I have to go pee real quick. Oh, okay. Um, I forgot to go pee before the show. This seems to happen more more often than it's not. It's only once. This is the second time. Talk about eyes and he has to go to the bathroom, you know what I'm saying? Got to watch out for this guy. <laughs> okay, anyway, I guess since um, <clears throat> since he's run away, I am going to uh, have to answer... Uh, I have to answer a thing or two here. Okay, so uh, one says... <clears throat> The camera thing reminds me of that episode on South Park where they send the TSA to monitor everyone's bathrooms with camera and security lines to make sure no one falls in the toilet. Well, yeah. I mean, that's just exaggerated, but absolutely. Navid Pay says, Guys, I don't like to bring up the shills' names, but um, a food king crossed the line, and I believe it's bullying and harassment. It goes against YouTube community standards. Yeah, please go report that if you can. Visiting Earth says, Taiwan will take the mainland. Now, that's a pipe dream, but that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Uh, Imperial Salt says... 
what Imperator Salt says. After hearing about Winston's grandpa during World War II serving an essay with the RAF made great grandpa would have served, uh, my great grandpa would have served with him. He too fell in love with SA. That's cool, man. Yeah, my old grandpa is awesome. He had his own little bar in his house. Um, you know, a typical British guy drinking beer all the time. Had the little, had the moustache, you know. Oh, what, what, stone the crows. Funny old chap. Anyway, um, Humanity Never Learns says, Would Chinese people approve of the use of bioweapon? Uh, yes, I, I believe so. And Simulk actually made a very good video about that, which you got to see. We'll talk about it a little later. You know, I have yeah. people that, like, tell me yeah? that you're calling me p -mail. Pea milk? Yeah. I haven't... No. Oh, you didn't? No. People are trolling me on my phone. No, I didn't call People you pea milk. People are literally texting me. They're like, he's calling you pea milk. I think we should call him pea milk from now on. I mean, I'm okay with that. Yeah, just, just when you run into these things. Anyway, now we got to get onto the main segment of the show, now that you've relieved yourself of whatever nastiness, got rid of the white devil or whatever it is. Stop. Let's... Oh, dear. That's <laughs> way worse. Okay. That's email. <laughs> Let's continue here. So what are what we What have looking... I missed? <laughs> Let's... Uh, Holy yeah. shit. Let's take a look. We have um, 5,000 concurrent viewers right now. That's fantastic. And do you know why? Because we're about to talk about Squid Game. Okay. Now, I, I only, in preparation for this, I watched the first episode last night, and I enjoyed it. Good. I because I was about to make a Ben Shapiro joke. Okay, yeah. But I actually did watch it. I actually like this kind of thing. I don't have time for childish shows. <laughs> I'm a, <laughs> I mean, an adult. <laughs> this, is, this is heavily influenced by Japanese stuff in the past, like Battle Royale. Uh, the anime and manga Gun Gunst, and uh, if you it saw is, that, it is Alice, inspired by Alice Battle from, Royale. Actually, it's from Battle Royale. Yep. There we go. And uh, Alice in Borderland was pretty good recently. Very good show too. I like this kind of dystopian, like weird game of you know game for your life type thing that they do. Now I wanted to tell everyone because mm. I have actually been watching it. Yes, you have. At I least, at least first... you did some homework. No, I watched the first episode. I'm, I'm happy you did because yeah. usually you'll be like, I have no time for childish. No, games. I'm not like that. I'm just, I just I'm joking. I, I hate Korean dramas. This is not a drama. It is. This is how Koreans... Remember you keep saying, I can't believe you watch Korean dramas. This is what they're like. This All, is what they're no, like. You, you know, those Korean like dramas with men crying. Oh, yeah. I love you know? those too. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> that's what I don't watch. This no, but there's not, a lot I would of shows. Remember this... I told you to watch Vincenzo and stuff. You're like, mm -hmm. oh, it's a Korean drama. It's, it's like this. It's yeah. a show. Maybe. It's a show. Yeah. You know, and it's very well made. I'm sure it is and everything, but there's probably crying men with swish hair and, you know... Yeah. Plastic looking men. You There's know. crying men in Squid Game too. I'm pretty sure they're Because are. they're dying and shit. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what I wanted to say is yeah. I'm only on episode seven out of okay. nine, so there won't be any spoilers. Seven of nine, eh? No, seven I'm of nine. Dude, I used to... Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, let's carry on. You think she's pretty yeah. hot, you know? Yeah. Um, oh, I almost went into a very personal thing there. No, uh, anyway. no, yeah, I just got back from the bathroom, you know? Anyway, let's continue, shall this we? This is, I made a quick pea milk joke, and you go all the way in. It gets R-rated real quick when I leave the room. So what happens if you if you have to leave the show? You're the opposite of Ben Shapiro. Yeah, yeah. You're talking about men's secretions. Nope, nope, I'm just talking about you. Let's Wet continue. ass P-word. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> anyway. Stop. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Squid Game. Yeah. I'm not going to give, a lot of people in the beginning were like, you're going to spoil it. No, no spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. spoilers. We're going to talk about what's going on with China. Yeah. So, the really important thing that's yeah. happening in China right now is the fact that China is trying so hard to every maybe five minutes go to the next picture. I got some different pictures. Yeah, yeah. Right. Trying so hard to get rid of Korean influence. So we had a super chat earlier that asked about this to get rid of Korean influence out of China. And the reason is, is that China's always suffered from a problem of not having cool media. Mm. Chinese music isn't cool to the local populace. Yeah. Chinese movies are not cool to the local populace unless you're a certain demographic. Although that patriotic certain thing demographic, yeah, certain the, pa demographic. the patriotic movie really hit the blockbuster that Korean War one, which is all fake. How? But are you going to believe that? What do you believe? COVID numbers too from no. China? No, no, no. What? Tell us about what they do in China at the movie theater. Well, I mean, they they when there is a homegrown movie that they want to do well, especially if it's patriotic. They have all these ways of inflating the box office numbers. Not to say it didn't do well, by the way, because those kind of movies do do well in China. Right. But right. they'll do things like take retired people that are supposed to get free tickets. Right. And they'll issue the tickets without actually giving it to the people and then mark it off in the system that those all those retired people watch the movie. Correct. And then they'll pay for it. The local governments will pay for it or whatever. So it's the actual money goes in there. They'll do stuff like... When someone buys a ticket to see a foreign movie, they change it. They actually sell them the ticket for that movie. All that kind of crap. Right. Sell out seats that are fake. It's kind of ridiculous the lengths they go to. And I remember when they made this very patriotic Mao Zedong movie. 
I can't even remember what the hell it was. But they were going around, and even in Shenzhen, in the urban villages, trucks would turn up with like a big mobile projector, and they'd play it. They would play it to make sure everybody watched this really piece of shit movie, whatever it was. It was so annoying. Because um, I saw The it. founding of the country or whatever so it was what, called, yeah, yeah, I think it was that one. Yeah. And they had like, so everyone's like sit, sitting that. there outside and they would play it on the loudspeakers and yeah. have this big projector for everybody to see like everywhere. And the funny part about that one was, you know how they sell, well, they used to sell pirated DVDs everywhere. Yeah. Just, just on the side of the road. We talked get, about that last episode. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's right. Now they would sell pirated DVDs everywhere, right? And yes. I used to go buy my pirated DVDs and they don't give a crap about that. But when people started to sell this founding of a nation or whatever, patriotic Chinese pirate dvd that police would come and raid them and shut them down and confiscate all their stuff and arrest them but it's okay if you pirate all the western movies but if you pirate that patriotic movie you're dead meat so like those shops kind of all disappeared or they would be very very careful to make sure they didn't have that in their little collection it's kind of crazy anyway so what i'm getting into there that's just a little side on how yeah. unpopular stuff actually is yes domestic stuff is in china um korean stuff's massive k-pop k-dramas all this kind of stuff and it's it's to the point where you can't really get away from Korean dramas in in China. Everyone watches them. They have Chinese subtitles. There's huge companies that are responsible for making those Chinese subtitles, right? right? right. Problem is, is that now the Korean drama market is shifting into Netflix, and Netflix is not allowed in China, yeah. right? In fact, if you want to get on Netflix, you have to use a VPN. And what do people do usually? Dude, I gotta tell you, it's so disgusting. It pisses me off. This is typical China, though. I've got a friend who um, <clears throat> he wants to watch Netflix. He's a foreigner who lives in China. So what he does is on Taobao, they sell 30-day free trials for Netflix. Now, everybody knows if you want a 30-day free trial, you have to sign up with your email address, you know, and whatever other details in order to get this free trial because otherwise people would abuse it. Well, guess what? The bot farms in China abuse it. Yes. They make random, like tons of fake email addresses and fake whatever profiles. And what they do is they sign up for free 30-day Netflix accounts and then they sell those on Taobao. So my friend, all he does is like when his free 30-day thing runs out, he pays him. It's like 20 RMB, which is what in dollars? 20 RMB? So yeah. it's uh, about two and a half dollars. Yeah, it's two and a half dollars or whatever. He pays them online and they send him, send him the email address and the password of the new 30-day. They create a new one for him. So every so month he's just... I, it's so do. scummy. So basically he watches <laughs> Netflix for free. That's just, well, not for free. He pays $2. Why doesn't, he use, why doesn't he sign up for Netflix and then use a VPN to watch it? Just pay for it. It's cheaper to do that. That's so much effort. I know, but that's that's how... If people are watching Netflix in China, most of them are doing it through these sure. free 30-day trials. Yes. N- imagine the Netflix account databases. Yeah. Must have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of these like stupid, like once-off, reusable, throwaway accounts with these... Five six nine 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 at jd.com or whatever right. it is. You know, it's like, <laughs> so it's some, many of those. Some crap. Anyway, that's they how they watch. Like pictures. Yeah, that's how they watch uh, Netflix. A lot of people there. Right. He also buys games for his PlayStation that way, which is the most annoying what? thing. What happens is people will hack other people's accounts. Okay, so they'll hack someone's account quickly, buy a certain amount of games. And then they give you the username and password. What you do is you log on on your PlayStation, download those. It's downloads to your playstation and you can access those games through your other profile so you know but then if oh that, if that other profile gets shut down or whatever it doesn't matter because you've already downloaded them it's he does stuff like that it's kind of wow fun. Yeah. anyway so so that that's that's a yeah. good aside so yeah the thing with squid game mm-hmm. is that it's the most popular show on netflix of all time Right, yeah. so it's obviously it's a Korean drama and it's popular. It's gonna make waves in China too, yeah. even though it's blocked. Even though the vast majority of people are not using Netflix, like you're talking about, the vast sure. majority of way they're gonna watch pirated shows is pirated, through yeah. Just, pirated websites. There's yeah, streaming websites. There's sixty of them. Yeah. Sixty websites in China that are specifically catering to pirated things. Yes. In China, lets a lot of them go because they'll play stuff that's not necessarily blocked. It's just stuff that didn't have access in the Chinese market. Yes. Now. Squid Game is absolutely on a list of t- something to be blocked because of how violent it is. Mm-hmm. Violent stuff is only okay in China if you're shooting Japanese yeah, soldiers. Yeah, that's it. If you're killing Japanese you or foreigners. You can flay them alive. <laughs> yeah. You can blow their heads off. Sure. That's fine as long as it's pro-China mm-hmm. and pro-CCP history. Correct. But if you're showing a foreign-made show where people are getting their heads blown off and shot, very gruesome show, Squid Game, sure. right? Sure. If you're showing this kind of stuff that's not allowed, number two, there's nudity and, and actual hardcore sex scenes, right, in the show. 
No, I haven't got Absolute. to that part yet. Okay. Well, then it's not a spoiler. I mean, no, no, no. But anyway, that stuff is not allowed it's an in advert, China. It's not a spoiler. <laughs> we're not getting paid by Squid Game. I think they're doing their own marketing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're getting money by sh- talking about them. Sure, it's sure. the other way around. Mm. Um, so what was I going to say? So anyway, all of these things they add up to not being able to be allowed to show in China. Mm. However, China has had in the past some different versions where stuff is censored and then put on to the pirated sites, believe yes. it or not. They'll actually have shows, so let's say Big Bang Theory or something like this, where there will be jokes that aren't allowed in China. Yeah. They're not. It's not sanctioned by the government. It's not allowed by the government, but they let people steal it because they're not supporting that company. Yeah. And the people kind of get to calm down. They have their entertainment or whatever. And then if it gets out of control, they'll ban it. Sure. So they actually, they'll ban the pirated stuff too. Yes. The problem with Squid Game is because of how prolific it was. Yes. One post on Weibo, I kid you not, one post on Weibo that said, here's how to watch Squid Game, got two billion views. Two billion So views. more than the population of the entire country. Sure. It was like the biggest post ever mm. on Weibo, right? So the, the quote was, Squid Game is what everyone is talking about now. But this kind of show will never make it past Chinese censors. So I thank our fellow Weibo users for sharing information about where I can watch the show. And it got out of control. The government tries to shut down a website. It comes up another place. And it's everywhere Well, now. I mean... It's everywhere. My wife's already watched the whole thing. Right. It's so, so popular, yeah. right? So we just got to... We're good. Yeah, never mind, we're good. It's so mm. popular that it's mm-hmm. they can't stop it, right? Yeah. So there's a, a simultaneous thing happening. China hates Netflix because of how robust the media is on there. Yeah. And they don't want their people to have access to it. Sure. And they're especially mad at this show because it's super influential. So yeah. Netflix is pissed off because China won't let them into their market. Right. Any company would get pissed. Think about it. If you have like a fast food chain and then Unless China says Facebook. no. <laughs> Don't, I'll get into that another yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I learned a whole thing about that. It's hilarious. Okay. This kind of stuff that Mark Zuckerberg did. Oh my. Beyond naming his kid. Like yeah. weird shit to try to get into China. Doing the smog jogs. Do yeah, even more than that. <laughs> okay. But anyway, long story short, they're trying to they're really pissed off because China won't allow them into their market. Yeah. So what you didn't previously see was Korean dramas that ever, ever said anything negative about China. And I'll yeah. tell you why. This is fascinating. Even though a lot of companies mm-hmm. are getting uh, not not allowed into the Chinese market, but even because they're a pirated company, right? Mm-hmm. Like or a pirated TV show that's only allowed to be pirated in China. Yeah, they still get airtime on pirated websites, right? Yeah, which pisses them off until they learn that they can get Chinese sponsors. So you can watch some Korean dramas that are not allowed in China. Sure. But they'll have a pro-China segment in it and Chinese like Meng Nyo or like yeah, sponsors kind of and stuff in a show something. that's not on Chinese TV. It's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. They realize that they can still make money off of advertising because it's by so doing popular. it. Because yeah. it's so popular. K- Korean dramas, you know, my wife, she watches them all the time on her iPad. That's her thing. While yeah. she's, you know, doing something around the house or, sure. you know, whatever. She's having like a snack or eating guaza or whatever, you know, cooking guaza. Why not watch it on TV? It's a, you have a huge TV. I, I know. I don't know. <laughs> Just her thing. I okay. guess maybe when I'm doing something and, you know, maybe oh, okay. I'm watching something on TV, she'll sure. watch that just but it's everyone in china that i know every single person loves korean dramas yes. and korean tv shows mm-hmm. it's like the most popular more popular than japanese shows more popular Me than too. anything you know yeah i know you like i'm like obsessed with this shit now yeah anyway so um she she's already watched the whole of squid game without me by the way why would she wait for you well because she wanted to watch it with the chinese subtitles so later she, when we watch it with english subtitles it's um bit easier for her to understand what's oh going on. gotcha so it's like gotcha. It's, i'll give her a pass on that one sure anyway i was just saying this this is something that all chinese people are talking about and watching it's the most popular thing on the internet right now so yeah. let me get to the crux of it yeah korea is mad to the point where they send over like some diplomatic by, by the way i just gotta say hunger games is just a knockoff of battle royale right go watch battle and this in squid game is a absolutely better version of hunger games yeah. so no reason to watch hunger games yeah. is our point yeah exactly battle royale and this show is great um so i would say that out of this this whole concept squid game and battle royale are the best okay out of those okay. Out of, you know there's a whole zeitgeist to this yeah. kind of stuff but anyway it's got beat takeshi and you know yeah it's, it's first awesome hung, you know good. first battle royale almost said hunger games Ugh. no 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 anyway cat piss at <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, anyway. Cat piss over Dean. Let's just 
can we just I didn't make that up? <laughs> yeah. I okay. don't know why I said that. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so let's continue. Um, I, you're getting me off topic yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the really important thing about this revolution of Squid Game mm -hmm. is that it's gotten so out of control that Korea needs to go plug the hole here because there's no sponsorships for Korean companies or sure, anything here. Sure. And so they sent over like some ambassador dude that's like, Chinese authorities, can you please shut this down? But it's it's a wildfire at this point. Yeah. Everyone's finding ways to download it, pirate it, send it to each other. So here's the issue. Chinese government can't get a handle on it. Mm -hmm. And this show is the first time I've ever seen a Korean drama have things that are even slightly against the CCP. Right. Critical of the CCP. Critical. Yeah. There's a couple scenes in this show, and this is not a spoiler, um, where things are where they talk about how China repatriates North Korean uh, sex traffickers. Like, are yeah. they traffic? Right. You know, they they end up they in China. They don't repatriate the sex traffickers. They repatriate they re the people that have been sex trafficked. S sex traffic victims back yeah. into North Korea, where they'll suffer death and punishment. Sure, sure. That stuff is never talked about in Korean dramas, and I'll tell you why. The Chinese market's too important. Yes. So we're finally at a point now. Netflix basically has cut its ties with China. They're like, well, this is not going to happen anymore. Sure. And we're finally seeing the CCP enter uh, villain status in some of these shows, including even Korean dramas. And that's the CCP's nightmare. Yeah. Because at least they've been able to make Korea toe the line by saying, okay, your, Dude, your shows are allowed to be pirated. They have made the whole world toe the line. Right. When last did you ever mm. see? And I mean, look. You see the American government and, and uh, various different governments cast as villains in movies yeah, all, all the, the time. time. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's an evil like chief who's going to press a button, or there's an evil this or that, evil general, or mm. you know, just look at the Yip Man where, <laughs> where that like drill sergeant. It's still the funniest shit ever. I can't believe how ridiculous. We should have put, it put in this. So. Yeah, we will at some point. Anyway, the fact of the matter is. You never see China painted as an enemy ever, mm. even when they do bad things. You know, the fact of the matter is, you can love the Chinese government all you want. They make huge, terrible missteps and mis missteps. Oh, and it's mistakes. not. It's not mistakes. It's yeah. intentional. Yeah. It's intentionally evil. Well, things that are evil, things that are bad, and you yeah. should be able to point those out. So, if yeah. you're making a v movie or a TV show, you should be able to point out, like, I don't know, the Tiananmen Square massacre or yes. something, or something that's historically. <laughs> you okay? You need to go to the bathroom again. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> Joked on my what, what are you choking on over there? Okay, cool. Stop. Let's carry on. So anyway, the fact of the matter is there are things that have been done by the Chinese government that are empirically bad. Yes, like yes. allowing COVID to escape and right. not warning um, the world about yeah, it. Genocide you know? and, yeah, the uh, genocide. Lack of stuff human that, rights. And persecuting well, yeah, religion exactly, and torture. Like and human rights people, yeah. you know, it's, it's, locking them up. There's so many, things, so many things. But you never see anyone mentioning this kind of thing in a movie. Or in a TV series, because everyone's too afraid of China, too afraid of either being called racist or losing the market is the main reason. Right. Right? So it's good to see this. So in Squid Game, yeah. the CCP in particular, and we don't say China for a reason. Yeah, yeah. There's CCP. nothing to do Chinese people. And if, but if we say China, we mean, no, we mean the CCP. CCP. We mean the Chinese unless we're government. talking about the good things about yes, China. Yes, unless we're talking about the country as in just like the... The land. The things, and the things we like. Yes, sure. <laughs> so anyway, the um, Squid Game is moderately cast the ccp as a villain and that is incredible to me yes. i was blown away when i saw these things these scenes stuck out to me in the show because mm -hmm. i couldn't believe it this is the first time i've seen a korean show go out of its way to villainize the ccp and i think that's a great shift yes in what i think and what what's being talked about i don't know if this is speculation or not so i'll say it's speculation right but what's being talked about is in future shows that they're worried about losing to absolute, complete censorship uh, in China. So like shows that won't make it past the censors and then China will take them off the market anyway. Yeah. Is to include things about pro China, uh, pro Taiwan independence, pro Tibet, pro yeah. like we talk about genocide. That's China's nightmare because if that kind of yes. stuff makes it into very popular TV shows like Squid especially Game, Korean, yeah. If that stuff because it will be leaked into China, Chinese people will watch it, and the pirated stuff's not going to be censored. No. No. And now, so they lose their iron grip over yes. the message. That's what they're worried about. This is a new a Squid Game, in a way, is a, re a revolutionary way into changing how things could be done for soft power from other countries yeah. into China. Because you can't stop. You the CCP can control all at once, but it can't stop what's cool. No. And Squid Game is cool, and unfortunately, it carries some anti CCP messages for them, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be watched by everyone there. That's their fault for blocking the market off and being so heavy handed. Is that this kind of thing's bound to happen? Correct. Now, um, no, you can go back to that. Okay. Um, so just Looks some like Squid a Game PlayStation stuff. PlayStation controller. Yes, uh, which makes me incredibly happy. Mm. Um, huge PlayStation fan. 
Uh, it's like saying I like music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I like cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You like food? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like food. <laughs> Sandwiches are. Yeah. Am awesome. I right? <laughs> yeah. Totally. Anyway, so yeah. uh, some just some uh, general Squid Squid Game talk because I we've actually this is our most popular show ever in the history of ADV Fantastic. Podcast. Welcome everybody who's watching. Thank you for being a part of this conversation. Please make sure Super you are important. subscribed. Mm. Please. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So no, it's important. So you guys yeah. can know when we're alive. So general smash squid, that can of smash coke. Smash that can of coke. Oh, this one's full. I can't do. Look no, how little this is. So cute. Um, anyway. So what are we a coke sponsor now? No, because look, I got a Pepsi over here. Okay. And a Lacroix. <laughs> what are we talking? I'm trying to get a topic. Here. Yeah, get get through. So uh, some general Squid Game talk because yeah. there's obviously a lot of fans in the chat right now yeah. watching. Um, there's a number on the card. So in general, this is in the trailer. You guys don't need to, to have spoilers. But Squid Game, people go to this place and try to fight for money in general. Okay. Mm-hmm. But they get a card, a business card, which has a phone number on it. You've seen that, right? Yeah. I call this number. Unfortunately, I didn't show it. Unfortunately, the phone number turned out to be real. Oh, really? <laughs> it's some old lady. Oops. And she's getting harassed by like tens of thousands of people. She should set her number up as one of those you have to pay to call. Dude, she'd make a kill. Yeah, you know, like those 800 numbers or 900 yeah, like, numbers or whatever. Stay on line for a <laughs> steamy chat. <laughs> hey, big boy. Oh, That's man. some like trucker woman, like, you know, like when smoking. When that kind of thing actually still exists? You know it does. Probably. For some like boomer. Maybe uh, boomers are online though. I I got nothing against boomers. I think they're awesome. No, but boomers doing that. Oh right. I mean, I'm pretty. I'm on the cusp of being a boomer anyway. Right are you? In, you don't turn into a boomer. No, but I'm on the cusp, like a couple of years out. Are you? I'm born in 1980. I think boomers is the 50s, bro. That's true. <laughs> Where yeah. you're like a yeah. little far off. A couple, a couple decades, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> Yeah, maybe Good three math. decades, two decades. Fantastic math. Yeah, I know. So My anyway, great. This, this woman, <laughs> this woman keeps what are getting numbers? calls. Yeah, okay, right? she keeps getting calls, right? But what I thought was funny was this next thing here, um, which we'll get out of the picture for you guys to enjoy. But did you happen to, I have to ask you this to set it up. Did yeah. you happen to watch it with the English dub at all? No. Okay, I only watch it in Korean, but I put on the English dub just to see. Okay. It's apparently so bad. I don't watch dubs. Oh, okay. all, all Japanese stuff I watch as well. Right. So someone made well. a their own English dub of the show. Oh, they did? Which is very so funny. This is not spoilers, right? No, no, no. no okay. No, all right. No. I haven't seen this. Okay. No, let's let's take a look. Any ideas? It could be Nepal twist is. What the fuck is that? One person uses their finger to draw a shape around the nipple. If you flinch, you get a twisty. Oh shit. Hmm? I have really sensitive nipples. <laughs> Did you hear that? Little flower nipples over here can't even handle a simple game of nipple twisties. <laughs> oh, wow. Sounds just like little bitch. Old oh, bitch nipples. <laughs> Any advice? Massage. Massage. Oh, you mean like that? Yes, that's right. Just like that, sir. <laughs> what? what is this you're you'll know me. you'll know you'll know okay it doesn't spoil anything okay. but anyway um just thought that was funny so yeah. squid game i think has the potential to change this, this is my summation i think squid yeah. game has the potential to change how people try to sneak messages into china in the future yeah. kind of a message in a bottle you know like when they drop leaflets over north korea and they're like actually this is what south korea looks like mm-hmm. and it's like people having fun and yeah. like hanging yeah. out that's kind of like a way of, of doing. It's a it way China. of getting messages in because yeah. that's that is one thing about um, the the current, you know, mm. my generation, your generation of Chinese people is they've grown up as China was opening up. Yeah. This rhetoric we're seeing right now with this whole Xi Jinping thought and you know we have to close down yeah. and all this very China centric hatred of the outside world, us versus them thing. Yeah. It's fairly recent. Okay. It is. And it's within the last six, six, seven years or so. You're right. But previous to that, people were all, they're all watching Friends and, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. And, and the Big Bang Theory, that was a big thing. And they were embracing Western culture. Um, and it's difficult for those people to suddenly be told you're not allowed to watch an entertaining show. Our generation of Chinese people are the least nationalist out yeah. of all of them yeah. because they've seen both sides. Yeah, they have. Right. The newest generation has not seen both sides. No, they've only seen the closed off version. Yeah, and they've, they've seen like China being a successful, um, you know, like a place where there's money. Yeah. So they haven't seen the poverty and no. they think that this is just China is so great. And, and they also haven't seen outside influence at all. No, that's right. true. It's a bit of a mess. Anyway, uh, let's take some, some super chats before we move on to our next 
topic, which is going to be Wumao Corner. You guys will love it. Yeah, it's going to be uh, good Where one. did you leave off? Uh, I left off on the... Um... Bioweapon one? Yes. Okay. Spiffy Rack, Freedom of Navigation in the South Taiwan Sea. Speaking of the bioweapon thing, I uh, just got to say, if you haven't seen Seamilk's video, bookmark it for after this video and go watch it. I appreciate that. It's um, something that... We're actually, actually going to speak about it in the next live yeah, chat yeah. or live stream. So We will. I mean, a, a patron of mine actually sent me this yeah, document. Thank you about to him. It. And yeah, it's something that I've heard about in the past. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about it. And we were like, look, we should probably look into this. And then as we dug deeper into it, we realized how serious it's, it is. It's a real and that's why scary thing. Your video is very important. So yeah, please I go appreciate check it out. that. Thanks. Yeah, no worries. Um, humanity never learns. Oh, sorry, I just read that. Uh, mm -hmm. So sorry, JPN says China stole the idea of one person looking at multiple cameras in a town from England, uh, especially from the movie Hot Fuzz. Only they replaced the old neighborhood watch guy with a young girl. Oh, interesting. I remember that movie. That yeah, was it was funny. a great movie. Chris yeah. Ramsey spoke with a young man from West Africa regarding China. Uh, interesting to hear everything you speak of validated from another perspective. Awesome. Oh, that's cool. He's West African. Yeah. Uh, yeah. free speech well, he spoke to a West African yeah yeah. Hopefully, hopefully he didn't have I know yeah. uh, but and I was I'm, just saying I yeah. hope he wasn't wearing a Burger King hat <laughs> yeah so free I'm, well, I'm South African West African I'm aware and, I'm just, yeah no just, it's it's good just trying to say hope it wasn't that guy hope it wasn't the king no it wasn't the king uh, free speech <laughs> respecter yeah it's quiet yeah no it's quiet for him Colin Week says belated welcome home to my home state oh fellow hey, Pennsylvania thank you love the but number I do not love the number Colin <laughs> Drew McTighe, enjoy $10. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Albert Buchanan, I was wondering how speculative the housing situation is going to affect the West Coast of the United States. Well, Winston actually has a perfect video on Yeah, that. please go watch it. And uh, it has affected it greatly, um, especially in places like Irvine and, uh, you know, Lake Forest and all these areas around. But go and take a look. Uh, I have a video all about, it's called like how corrupt CCP officials have ruined your neighborhood. Yes. Yeah, it's my recent video. PB says, please Say you got to understand China. I think you're better at that. China. You got to understand China. Perfect. And free speech respecter <laughs> says, "Seamel, can you ASMR? It's free real estate. It's free real estate." <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, guys, we've got such a good ADV China coming this Monday. Oh, it's a big one. Can't wait. You know, we we hadn't released this. Yeah. Um, what were we doing? I think we kind of wanted to keep it on the download for a bit, but we've we drove rode through. Um, China's biggest ghost city, basically. Yeah. Um, and, like uh, most something happened. Something, yeah. It's crazy, but we've got some really good raw footage no one's seen before. Never and seen. It's going to be amazing. So Monday, bookmark ADV China. We filmed the whole chase. Yeah, too. yeah, exactly. It's fun. It's going to be. Someone good. chased us. Yes, someone chased us. It was the PLA. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kev Kevlitis and Ionius, thank you for it. Doubting Thomas says your th your thoughts on the theory uh, that the heirs of Deng Xiaoping are ultra wealthy and the real ones pulling the strings in China. Um, mm. No, I would say. Jiang Zemin has a faction, not Deng Xiaoping. Yeah. Mr. AB, looking for the new, forward to the new ADV China video. Perfect. Well, there we go. Yeah, don't and worry. On Monday. I'll do two more. Uh, Cindy says, a bit ago, I met a China, Chinese guy online. I asked what his religion was, and he said the People's Republic of China. I didn't understand until now. Yeah, that's yeah, it. it's pretty hard. It's actually kind of a joke, too, though. Some people mm -hmm. say that. Le Leonard uh, said, Leonard, sorry, Leonard. <laughs> Leonard. Yeah. The world's attitude towards the CCP has changed. During a free diving event, CCP protested a Taiwan athlete playing under the Taiwanese flag, and the broadcast pulled the flag. In solidarity, 10 countries requested their flag be pulled. Yeah, as we well. spoke that about awesome. that last week, actually. Yeah, we yeah it's it. really good. And Moritz uh, Strip Matter says, Hey guys, your podcast is always a highlight to my Friday nights. Great work. And thank you for sharing all that awesome stuff that you do on Patreon with us, Moritz. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Cool. We'll uh, move okay, on. Okay, we're going to move on to Wilmar Corner. And this is where uh, we talk about hate, usually directed towards us or anyone really. Gives you an idea into uh, the minds of the zeitgeist of what's going on uh, yes. with the, the CCP. So this time around, we're actually going to talk about um, <sighs> something that you, if you're a watcher of the show, should be quite familiar with. <laughs> do, you, do you remember um, that song for the media challengers? We've got to run. <laughs> we've got to fly. That one. We've got oh. to run. It's strange we haven't heard much about the media challengers since we called them Isn't out that publicly. It's basically it's almost like they flushed millions of dollars down the toilet. It, it, it literally was a recruitment program for propagandists, foreign propagandists. And what they're trying to do is get foreign vloggers and influencers to basically go shill for the Chinese government and to go around China to debunk, to challenge the media perceptions, Western media perceptions of China. So what that is, is it's doing propaganda, which you got to watch out because that can probably be illegal in your country. It's yes. possible. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, they had this whole thing, the media challenges, and they had this catchy, terrible like song. Uh, 
you know? So bad. They yeah. shat it out at the last, you can tell they shat it out. Yeah. And half of it's stock footage, we can't show you. Yeah. Because we can yeah. use whatever video we want, but we can't use whatever song they want. And they use one of those freaking copyright It's like poachers. a copyright troll, basically. Yeah. So take a look. Video cannot be monetized for some reasons because um, the copyright owners is Street Voice TV on behalf of CGTN because Which is that Chinese music. State media. Yeah. Yeah. So We've take got look. to run. That one. That got us copyright uh, claim. And this has happened probably only on this channel already at least five times now. Yes. And it's either Chinese, it's usually Chinese state media. It's, it's always Chinese state now, media. Now, to think that Chinese state media is so yeah. thin skinned that they have to copyright strike a YouTube channel because they obviously try to get us taken down, but it doesn't work. So then they're like, well, then we're going to copyright strike strike you yeah and it's always a manual copyright strike it is because it took a while yeah it's not like automatic they actually it tells you when it's manual and they stuff, go and yeah. It's like, yeah you know what i think they are i think they're butt hurt because they spent like all this money on that music video with all these freaking shills singing their cgtn cctv propaganda song yeah and it got like two thousand views or something yeah and we got probably like a hundred thousand views we promoted their bullshit more and i think they're really butt hurt about that oh, they certainly are Okay, so, we so got struck. that's pretty much Wuma Corner. No, guys. you skipped one. You always, you always. Skip did it. I show me which one I skipped? Let's see. What did I skip? We've got to not run. that. No. Go back. Go back. Yeah. Oh, this go, one. Go forward, maybe. Go forward, maybe. Yeah. Uh, this is. Yeah, this, so oh, this one. Go. Sorry. Okay. So, what did I skip? Well, you can talk about it. As a that mm. that Tiananmen Square monument at Hong Kong University. Yeah, unfortunately. They're trying to take it down. Yeah. You know, that's one thing that's always been uh, very good about hong kong is that the local laws have been respected usually in the past okay and they're separate from china's laws it's been one country two systems as they call it okay so even though hong kong was handed back under the agreement the laws the money the way things work there should should have stayed the same for 50 years yes unfortunately we all know the ccp is just a bunch of liars and they've reneged on that plenty of times they put this national security law in there They've canceled a whole bunch of freedoms, a whole bunch of the laws being changed in order to fit the CCP. They've put in puppet like CCP sympathetic people into the government, forced out pro-democracy people. You know the deal. We don't need to get into it. But one thing that used to happen every year is there would be like a Tiananmen Square uh, massacre vigil in Hong Kong. People go candles. They've shut those down. They're always making up excuses. They've arrested a bunch of people. Who they allow pro-China protesters. Oh, yeah, that's totally fine. Um, they've shut down a Tiananmen Square Massacre Museum that was there. I don't know if you saw the, um, the news yep. on that. It's pretty awful. And they took all the pictures and everything's just kind of been taken away yep. by the police. And now what they're trying to do is um, in Hong Kong University is being uh, basically they've got a, a memorial to the Tiananmen Square uh, victims and that's being shut down. And the worst thing is, is they're using a U.S. law firm from Chicago, Mayor Brown. Yeah, it's like um, a global thing. Yeah, they're trying to use them to get this thing shut down, which is kind of appalling. You we know, just, we wanted to say if you're in a if you're an American company yeah. and you're aiding in removing things yeah. on behest of the CCP, it's a really bad look, guys. Yeah, it's not. That's not a good thing to do. Yes, they have to. So. Um, they've demanded. So it says there, University of Hong Kong, <clears throat> Hong Kong University demanded the hashtag Hong Kong Alliance to remove the pillar of shame from its campus. 5 p.m. on October 13, and they're using this U.S. law firm to, you know, go ahead with this. So shame on uh, Mayor Brown for helping the CCP in its oppression. Just wanted to put that out there. That's Agreed. some definite Wu Mao stuff going on there. Oh, yeah. And <coughs> it's time for us to uh, take, well, actually, yeah, we've got our worldview still coming. So let's yep. take a couple more Super Chats. Uh, the Science Change says, many people on the left are very sympathetic to China. How do I get through to them? They're butthurt about U.S. presence in the South China Sea intern. Um, well, the fact of the matter is, it's very simple. If you could just show them how China, um, the, the attitude China has towards most left-leaning uh, things. Yes, yeah. like actually LG have a good video coming LGBT, up. they hate that. Um, when it comes, it's a very misogynist society, uh, incredibly misogynist. There's no social w programs. Women's rights is like, although people for some reason keep saying that like, oh, it's so great. It's, it's terrible. the least progressive yeah, place. Yeah, it's terrible. If you're a woman in China, you're screwed. They ban so many... gay things. They ban sissy pants. Do you see what stuff. happened they to ban... the, the hashtag Me Too yeah, person? They shut, down, they shut down feminist movements. Yes, they shut they everything They have no down. social programs. No? They have no social welfare. Yeah. Right? You have to pay before you get treated at a doctor. There's no yes. universal health care. Yeah. All of these things that people on the left would like, 
China is the antithesis. Of yeah. So when uh, that's that's something that's always human rights. Look, I understand it, especially um, with leftists. I get it on the right as well, but leftists absolutely love anything that is an enemy of um, their society. Okay, Western society in particular, because they they hate Western society. They see so many flaws in their society, which is understandable. There are flaws <laughs> in Western society a lot, so they're willing to overlook the terrible things in the Chinese CCP society and the Chinese CCP government because it's just an enemy of the things they hate, right? So that's why they overlook it. It's kind of crappy. So um, just when you're having those kind of conversations, go do some research, get some facts behind you about how the, the oppression of uh, anyone you know, that's into you know, LGBT or anything, and just show them that you know, this is who you're defending here. I'd like to also... Mm -hmm. say that this division between left and right it's right nonsense. we've never we've never stated our political affiliation but both Winston and i are quite different mm. but what i will say is that doesn't matter a lot of people yeah. always like in the chat they're like oh i bet winston is this i bet seamilk is this it doesn't matter because you know what when you play into this that is exactly what the chinese government wants you have a lot more i'll tell you what you as a right-wing person or a left-wing person has a lot more in common with your right and le or left-wing american neighbor than a CCP official that wants to absolute tyranny and to destroy all human rights. And force like brainwashing on students Correct. in school and whatever yes. else. You know? And you can come up with whatever bullshit you want, but that division and you, a lot of you guys on the more extreme side of things will keep running to those extremes and say, but, 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 no, but. Yeah. The Chinese government is quite possibly the biggest threat to mankind right now. Correct. And that is something that everyone can get behind. Yeah, so it doesn't matter if you, you hate your right-wing neighbor or you hate your left-wing neighbor. That's, that shouldn't be your focus. It's not no. about left and right. China's a different ballgame. It's bipartisan. It is. Both sides, both sides are diametrically opposed to what the CCP wants to do because they want to force, um, force lockdowns in the worst kind of way where they actually like weld you into your house Correct. when it comes to these things. They want to force vaccinations and have, well, force vaccinate, that, that whole thing about having a vaccine passport or whatever, it's already like that in China. Right. When you walk around, you have to have your QR code, which right. you have to get scanned before you're allowed into a shopping mall. And you're only there. allowed to have the Chinese vaccine, yes, by the way. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, the, the other, inferior you one. You can't one even choose your vaccine. Well. But yeah, if you want to be able to go anywhere or do anything, you need to have that vaccine passport. Look, things that left-wing left people hate and things that right-wing people hate is what China is doing anyway right now. Right. So you've got to come together on and, this. And you know? to just sum that up completely is that you have... you yeah. got to understand, China. The yeah. point... No, the actual point that I wanted to make about that is that this division is very much in line with what the Chinese government wants. Yes. They don't want unity in, in America specifically because what happens is people will argue over a very... Very non-issue mm. that is exacerbated by the media, whether it be CNN or Fox or any of these news outlets, because it gets clicks, it gets views. People run onto Facebook and Instagram and all these things and put out absolute lies and bullshit to rile up other people in their camp. They will not look outside their, their tunnel vision, right? And China laughs all the way to the bank because what they do is force unity in their own country. Yes. And nobody actually focuses on the issues, like Taiwan, like what's happening in the South China Sea, because... You're not focused on that stuff when you're talking about Trump Biden shit in lawn signs. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Foc they've got to focus on things like the Galapagos Islands again, right. just being completely stripped once again. Right. They keep sending fleets out there now, squid fleets to go and just decimate the sea life. Why are people ignoring this? They're ignoring this because oh, some some t person did this stupid little thing in America, and everyone focuses on that, and they make riots and stuff over stupid little things like oh, the wee spa incident or whatever. That's what people are focusing on. Right. People focus on that garbage. What's going on? Yeah, exactly. We, that got, is, we got an echo again? Don't talk about it. Okay. So that is actually what people are concerned about right now. Yeah. Um, and it's the wrong thing to be to be concerned about. Okay. Um, Saptarshi Singupta says, great to see you guys again after a long time. So mm -hmm. the lady in the control room is teaching Chinese manners. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's do that. We haven't had that in a while. Let me show you Chinese manners. Yeah. Uh, well... Rum Runner says, I'm oh, sorry, yeah. what are you doing? Sorry. We should probably hit our last segment, then we can get okay, into all the sure, Q&As. Okay, sure. we got World View, everybody, where we talk about what's happening in the world with regards to China. It's kind of like what's new, all right, but with a more of a world slant to it, should we say. Okay, and we have something to show you here. Remember, China was, we talked about this last week, uh, China's been having issues with uh, coal shortages. Again, 
It's not because they're trying to cut back on carbon emissions, for those idiots who actually believe that lie. It's because they didn't have enough coal. Yep. So what have they done? So remember this whole thing about how they're like, screw you, Australia, without us buying your stuff? Mm. You're dead. You're the gum on the bottom of our shoe. You remember that, yeah. Yeah, uh, it turns out that it didn't happen. They just reneged on all that stuff. And they're buying cotton, coal, all kinds of stuff. Copper. From Aust- copper from Australia. They couldn't live without it. Yeah, so they had this like informal ban um, yeah. on all these products from Australia to punish Australia for doing things like questioning about COVID origins and whatnot. Correct. So they, that's what they do is they punish people. It's this fake mm. carrot real stick. Oh, you want you want to come into the market? Come on, here, yeah. yeah, we'll we'll let you into the market. You're gonna have to set up factories. We're gonna help you, etc. And then they're like, if you don't do this, then we're gonna cancel all your operations. We're gonna kick you out of the market. They do that all the time. They got a real stick and a fake carrot because you never actually get anything good at the end of the day. Correct. You don't get that carrot. Right. Um, anyway, so the fact of the matter is they've now reneged on their own thing because that's what they do. They're pragmatic. Okay. They don't give a shit. What they say means nothing. The Chinese government says whatever it wants because it's convenient at the time. Mm, And they said they're going to cancel, and they did. They canceled importing coal. They left a bunch of Australian tankers or whatever full of coal just sitting there in the ports, rotting away. They did the same with Australian wine, with Australian cotton, with Australian copper. But it turns out they need that stuff because that's how it works. They think they don't need it because of all the bureaucracy and the lies and the people, sycophants, going there and saying, oh, we've got enough. We don't need Australian coal. Meanwhile, they don't. And now we've had power shortages. So what are they doing? Now they've allow the import of Australian coal again to fix their power shortage and to increase their carbon footprint, which is what their end goal is anyway. They are like Captain Planet has that evil villain called Loot and Plunder. (laughs) That's literally China. They want to increase their carbon footprint. They say they're not, but meanwhile they will. They're like, let's destroy this planet. Uh, Let's destroy this planet. Go planet. You can play this. I just wanted to show pollution in the background. So this is actually a coal region of China. There's not enough coal in China. Uh, We should do an episode at some point. Uh, Mm. This is Shanxi. Mm. Um, We should do an episode at some point about the coal barons of China. They're the, you think like Bill Gates and stuff are the richest people in the world. Yeah. No, 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 no. It is the coal barons that buy their like daughter 99 Ferraris just for one like procession. Sure, sure. It's crazy. We actually went to the largest coal yeah. mining pit in the world. It was in, in China, China. In Liaoning. Um, and it's got that statue of Mao Zedong looking, looking, at, a piece looking at a piece of coal smoking and smoking a cigarette. A cigarette. Um, we've got footage of that, and that's coming up. We actually yes. have a lot of footage which you've never seen before, and yep. uh, we're going to make a it's, whole so. It's almost like we actually, I'm not, I'm not joking, we yeah. actually saved the best footage for after we left China. Yeah, of course. We actually did, though. Like, we yeah. still haven't released the best of ADV yet. Sure. Like, coming. one of our best videos is this coming week. It's Monday, yeah. 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 We have some good stuff. Yeah. Anyway, so that's just kind of funny to see how they are reneging, and they're now s- lapping up the Australian goods again, because they needed them. They needed like that them. wine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they're mainly cotton, copper, and coal. What's going cotton, on with Taiwan over here? So, Taiwan, as you can see, are the, the lovely nation of Taiwan. Yeah. Um, Taiwan's a country. Taiwan number one. Now, this is... This is big, okay? It's something that I, I just assumed was happening anyway, but China was, they responded to a rumor in the okay. past about there being U.S. troops in Taiwan. Hmm. And it was actually, they were talking about in 1979 when the troops left Taiwan. Sure. So they, they jumped on this old data and they said, if there's any troops in Taiwan from America, that's the final red line to be crossed. We will bomb Taiwan and take it back, right? So everyone's like, calm down, calm down. They're talking about the past. Sure. But actually, <laughs> there's been some troops uh, <laughs> stationed in Taiwan training Taiwanese local troops. Now, That's... there's only a couple dozen. Okay. But, but... Global times. Well, it's a big deal because that was supposed to be the final red line. How many final red, red lines does China have, though? Well, the final red line was if uh, if, if American troops step foot in Taiwan, then, then it's wartime, right? Yeah. So... I mean, it's it's got to be no accident that this information got out, yeah. right? When Wall Street Journal leaked, leaked it, they didn't f- come up with a source. It came from somewhere, sure. right? I think that it's probably America testing the waters to see how far they'll go. Because if they keep testing and China keeps saying, that's the final red line, that's the final red line, they've already done that a hundred times. Yeah, well, I mean, look, China does the same thing with the South China Sea. Like, oh, we're not going to militarize those islands and right. then they militarize the islands. Oh, Correct. we're not going to try and take this area, they take this area. We're right. not going to do this and they do it. And they do it. So America's, I, this is my theory, is that they're like, okay, well, let's let's do this little one. 
Yeah. And we'll see like how they respond to this. Sure. Because if it's if it's no holds barred and China doesn't do anything about this, like they never do, yeah. other than sending jets over to get scrambled, mm-hmm. then what's stopping an actual like base to be built in Taiwan, right? That's yeah. that's long term. But anyway, uh, Hu Xijin, our favorite guy, he he's uh, the Global Times. He's the editor. one that jumped on the first rumor about Americans being stationed there. Why don't you read his amazing? He says, tweet? Why just two dozen members? Why secretly? The U.S. should send 240 servicemen publicly in U.S. military uniform and make public where they are stationed. See whether the PLA will launch a targeted airstrike to eliminate those U.S. invaders. So he's saying that they should use targeted missiles to shoot the Americans on Taiwan. Yes. Because this is what uh, China views as a threat on their own region. They so see they it think as, say, invaders. Invaders, because Taiwan is a province. Now, I, I of China, that's, uh, that's, what, they that's what they think. Now, I want to ask the CCP something. Mm. Why didn't they know about the, because they apparently had been there for a year, mm. this American soldiers base in Taiwan. How did they not know about it, their own province? Certainly their intelligence should be able to tell them what's happening in their own country, right? Because Taiwan's a part of China. Right? Well, of course it's not. Yeah. yeah it's anyway, a like, uh, it's a joke. Let's hope this doesn't push tensions up too high. Yeah. Um, for sure. But it is a good, it's a good yardstick. It's a good way to see, you know, what uh, China's response is going to be. Um, it was, it was interesting. I didn't expect this to happen, to be honest. No, so, no, no. It's I kind of, it was kind of interesting. interesting. Um, and yeah, I guess there's nothing else there. So let's hit our Q and a, which is our section where we answer your questions and you question our answers. That's right. So what do we got? Rum runner says I've been sub for years and I want to say Shishini for inspiring me to travel. I have to tip this a little bit because I'm reading. Um, in 2022, I'll move to North India to study Tibetan. That's fascinating. Cool. Y'all should visit there. Uh, you haven't rode a bike till you've rode the Himalayas. Maybe someday. Mm -hmm. Ruth power, that ball sack meme will never get old. That's true. Who says it's a meme? I think it's an actual, it's an endorsed song. Yes. You know? uh, Peter Bolsack, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> is very, very much responsible for the spread of COVID overseas because he colluded with the Chinese government. Of course, it's the CCP's fault, but he helped in no small amount. So yeah. don't ever, never forget the name of Peter Bolsack. Right. What is that again? Right. That's mm-hmm. right. Thanks. I always forget. Yeah. Um, Thank you for thank you, Swindle. The Don, why do Americans pee in the bath? Um, I do Americans pee in the bath? No, I pee no in the idea. shower. Everyone no pees idea. in the shower. If anyone says they've never peed in the shower, they're lying. That's like an sure. easy way to spot a liar. Sure, sure. You're like a pathological liar if you say you've never peed in the shower. Sure. A Watson, uh, what would be a good gift to send a Chinese student aged seven to ten from the U.S. Uh, that he or she would actually enjoy from an online English teacher? Mm, seven to ten. It's tough. What's popular right now? Uh, um, that's a tough one. I mean, I used to I used to teach that age group at some point. So um, some Chinese kids are playing Minecraft these days. So maybe some Minecraft toys, I, I, like a hoodie. Yeah, or a, just be careful about sending any kind of literature because you never know yeah. what's banned. I would go so, with something Minecraft. Yeah, some kind of toy. Yeah, like, Minecraft's been very popular for many years. Are you sure you're not out of date though? Because like that was like you're, freaking ten years you're ago. You're way out of date. Mm. The biggest videos on YouTube are Minecraft videos. No, I mean, but Chinese kids, I remember them like 10 years ago playing Minecraft. Minecraft made a huge resurgence. Like oh, okay. It did, absolutely. Don't worry. All right. Don't worry. I'm, I'm abreast of these things. Um, GBJB. I was going to say something. Say it. No, it's Do fine. it. Continue. Say it. No, Spit no. it out. No, continue, please. You're going to make a breast joke. No, not right now. It's too late. <laughs> Let's continue. First time watching your live. Also, enjoy watching your YouTube. Thanks from South Korea. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Um, komata, komata. Uh, Sam W., uh, I read the story of how the U.S. submarine struck something in the South China Sea. I saw that. And quickly had a quick moment of panic. Definitely had a quick moment of panic. What are your guys' thoughts on this and what it was? No injuries, mm-hmm. serious injuries, um, and the nuclear sub was not damaged. So Yeah. Don't, no, no, maybe they hit a, uh, a whale. whale or something. A whale. <laughs> yeah. They had a whale. Or a the rock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ivan, thank you very much. Venture Crew 06 in China right now. It feels like an open prison. Love from Jijiang. Yeah. Stay safe, my man. Yeah. Yeah. Watch out. Uh, David Pei. Oh, the jackhammers yeah. nonstop. Yeah, anyone yes, who's David. lived in China will know about the jackhammers. It's probably the worst part about living in China is the Zhuangxiao. One of them anyway. PB says, Winston, Squid Game or my left foot? Dude, I, I would rather <laughs> literally, I, I would rather commit suicide than watch my <laughs> left foot. And sit through that. Again. Seriously. Yeah. It's the worst it's probably ranked up with the worst movies of all time. The most depressing, horrible, just the way it's... Everything about it. Remember, we watched the, the, 
the trailer. Yeah, and you refused to watch a Walk to Remember trailer. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, like, just even the cinematography and that brown, old British, like, atmosphere to it, it makes me want to puke. Oh, it's very much not in my, my field. I, I hate it. Yeah. Please, never mention it again. <laughs> All right. JB, thanks for take, talking about the CNN interview. To be honest, the Wumao had me questioning the guy. See? Yeah. See? Yeah. I knew it. See, that's how they get to you. Even I was skeptical. Because yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. Because I looked at the Photoshop thing. I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's a typo. You've got to do your own research. You These guys, to. their entire job is to discredit so dissent, so, so like in your mind, a little bit of a question about like, oh, oh, really? Do you think? But what they do is it's very simple. Rather than going after the message, they go after the person. So when they attack a person rather than a message that the person's giving, you know that they're probably wrong. Correct. Anyway. That's right. Uh, good to know you can never trust a woman. You mm -hmm. can't. You really. never, ever. Aleph Betts says, the government propaganda for state surveillance system reminds me of a dystopian kids show. Yeah. Juan says, Sea Milk, have you seen Crash Landing on you? Yes. It is amazing. It's a K-drama about a girl who gets stuck in North Korea. It's quite interesting. It's one of my favorite shows. Mm -hmm. uh case closed 93 ben shapiro joke you should be on the sunday special like winston ben's wife is also a doctor hardy har har yep um oh your girlfriend is a doctor next year congratulations the zeitgeist been oh. binging your content over the past week your respective getting out of china videos were very moving do you have a sense of loss in your former life in china cheers in a way um but you gotta move on yeah i mean like the, it's more of a sense of loss of what uh china used to be like mm. you know because it's not like that anymore we're so, talking about that today yeah i'm I would not want to go back to China right now. Not in its current state. No, no, no. not unless there's a regime change. Correct. Uh, of course, I miss certain parts of the lifestyle of there, it, yeah. and I miss people. Good times, friends. amazing yeah. times, and amazing people that we might not be able to see ever again. Yeah. Andrew Bomer, ADV China stream, Sea Milk post, and Serpents that I upload all in one day. My second favorite three-way. What's your first, <laughs> Andrew? What's your first? Just say it, huh? <laughs> you pervert. I'm no, that, Thank thanks, you very much. Thank really you. appreciate, appreciate it. that. Yeah. um second raid where where it just did snap again okay yeah fix uh that. where are we on the paul douglas one yeah that's correct um this oh sorry here we go jennifer says have you guys watched south uh Sao Sao hey hey. Feng Bao? Mm -hmm. what's that no i haven't watched it i don't know what that is second so raid sweep the black something away that dark means sweet, storm. Yeah, dark, dark storm. storm. Yeah, yeah. Feng Bao's storm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Paul Douglas, fantastic show, informative, entertaining, understanding mm -hmm. Chinese culture oddities. Always a high point of the day. Oh, glad you enjoy it. Thank you. S thank you very much. Subtarsh Singupta says, from fact, Emperor Ryan openly blag bragged about loving Bollywood wrestling movies in his last trip to India. That's okay. awesome. It seems his own citizens cannot watch now. Hmm. hmm. Keeping it all to himself, Ryan. Huh? That's right. Kony Tsung, on the road again. We'll have to catch up later. Okay. Uh, nice video on Evergrande. Do you think guys think it's a collapse will drive down real estate prices in Canada, Canada or make it even worse since I'm moving back soon? Well, I mean, the, the thing is, these if someone still has money um, to invest in property in China, if they're rich enough, they're probably going to invest overseas because they don't trust the market anymore. So it probably will drive up prices in Canada, Australia, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, that's what I think. Tornado Break, have you seen the 20 minute Chinese animation Lee's Adventure? It's a masterpiece. It sounds very familiar. No, I don't think but so. I don't think so. So, Anthony Saints, if you guys, hey, you guys keep on uh, kicking the CCP Winnie the Pooh leader's butt. <laughs> Thanks, appreciate that. Oh, it's, it's doing the snap yeah, thing it's again? It's doing the snap thing again. Okay, there it is. Uh, thank you, Aaron Young. Mm -hmm. Moritz, uh, just like they changed villain in Red Dawn from China to North Korea in the 2012 remake. Yeah, That's yeah. right. If you see the pre-production shots, they still have like the, when they still had China as the bad guy mm. and they changed that to North Korea because of backlash and they wanted to get into it's the It's okay China to market. say, it's okay to say the communist government in North Korea is bad, but not the Chinese government, which no. is bad. Yes. So, be guid. Got mm. nothing to say, but here's your capitalist evil injection. Money injection. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for that evil money injection. Super appreciate it. The guy in the behind us just got yelled. He just yelled at the, our cameraman for filming. Yeah. See yeah. that? Did yeah. you see that happen? Yeah, yeah. We pointed that out last time too. Oh, uh, okay. But this is a different clip. No, same. We've used oh, this, this once a, before. Oh, we used this once before. This okay. is like a two week old clip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is two weeks old. Sorry. Yeah. I was confused. Mm -hmm. uh, quick, I got a long line of cars behind me. I'm at the McDonald's drive-thru. <laughs> you guys want anything? Yeah. Oh, oh man, I wish you asked earlier. Thank you yeah, very much. Thanks. PB, if you had to be one, a boomer or a furry? A boomer for sure. Yeah, I'd rather be a boomer yeah, than a too. furry. Yeah, me too, 100%. Imagine being both, though. You do get him. In fact, I'm oh, really? he is a boomer. Oh, no, he's not. No, he's not. You're math, dude. Yeah, it's terrible. No, he's, he's not. He's like, what, 
It's 45? Like, no, no, he's like 20 years older. Oh, than really? Like maybe 15 years old. 15, 20? Yeah. Wow, he's an old man. Yeah, born in the early 70s, I guess, so probably about like 10 years old. Nine, yeah, that's nine not, years that, old. but that's not Boomer. No, it's not. No. Anyway, there's, there goes my math again. Power shift. Do sea milk sensitive nipples cause him to pee a lot? <laughs> um, not sensitive, but um, kind of. I don't like when anyone touches my nipples. Yeah, let's move on, please. <laughs> well, it's not a secret. Ball sack, please. From ball sack. Some guy with a name. Absolutely. I always get Happy a ball to oblige. Sack when you ask. Yeah. I don't think you need to introduce him, though. No. We just did it. Just so you know, Pete <laughs> Balzac is responsible for COVID in a lot of ways. I think you have to say it. You have to say it every time. Pretty so, much, yeah. yeah. Anthony McNabb, is conflict with the PRC likely? Cons- kind, kind of getting concerned about it. Uh, we're on the fence about mm. that. There's a lot of reasons to say yes, and there's also a lot of reasons to say no. Mm-hmm. Uh, love your video and channel, fellas. Thank you. I, I'll, I'll promise you this. As soon as we kind of have an inkling that something's going to go either way, we'll tell you. Yeah. Right now, it's too difficult to it say. Is. It's too difficult. Just, you know, if we say there is going to be something or isn't going to be something uh, mm-hmm. and it doesn't transpire, we'll have egg on face. And we don't... We don't that's do not that. the main reason behind it is we don't want to... Uh, fear monger and we don't want to put out the wrong signals that Correct. might like really that's impact someone's life you know when you told way. me about the bioweapon stuff the video i just made yeah. not covid covid is not a bioweapon yeah. um the one that i just put out when you were yeah. giving me that information we're reading through it together mm-hmm. we are also very much like we can't cover this until we figure this out so we spent yeah. uh, over a week yeah researching every detail making sure all the sources were cited properly yeah and it was true, yeah. unfortunately. Yep. Um, so when when you, we come across stuff that we're very passionate about and we're sure about, we'll tell you guys. Right. Dwight, shoot. Thank you very much. Um, Bert de Jong says, greetings from a boomer in Belgium. Hey, greetings. He's a, he got a yippee eye kaye cowboy hat. <laughs> yeah, do Belgians cool. wear cowboy hats? That's amazing. Yeah, maybe. That's right? cool. It's your right to do whatever you want. You know what I love about Belgium when I went there? What about it? They eat... Ale? I like that too. Actually, I'm not a huge fan. It's too sweet. Oh, okay. I, I prefer Czech beer. Okay. Um, but they Czech, eat. Please. Czech, please. <laughs> they eat uh, mussels, which I love mussels. I, mm-hmm. You're not a shellfish guy. Yeah. But mussels um, and then French fries, but they use mayonnaise instead of ketchup. Do you know all that all meat that we eat is mussel? Lol. <laughs> just saying. Just... Thanks for that. I like how you like went into it like it's going to be a very <laughs> fine nugget of wisdom. Well, it is. But you know mussels. They, they do a mussel. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I know what you mean. Baker. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> the seafood. Tell me your baker. Yeah. Okay. Rahal, tell me your sutiao. Good. Good for them. Um, but the, they don't use ketchup. They use mayonnaise. Yeah. Kind of interesting. I like mayonnaise. Don't yeah. you dare make a joke. <laughs> just, yeah, no, don't, don't worry about do it. Do it. You did it to yourself. And Belgian oh, and waffles. Gold. Yeah. You like waffles? Yeah, they're okay. It's a bit sweet. No, seriously, like. That's an American thing. This kind of like having Belgian a... waffles are American. No, <laughs> having a sweet breakfast. You know, it's oh, like okay. massive amounts of syrup on pancakes and stuff is sure. weird. Like sweet stuff. It's, it tastes. I you know, love bacon. The more British things, like you know, full English breakfast. You got eggs. I like sausage, that too. I like that. You know too. what I mean? It's like savory like... toast with butter you on. You can appreciate both. Except black pudding can go take a hike. I actually like black pudding. Well, there we go. Yeah. I'm gonna put that. What on do you your... mean? There we go. <laughs> gonna what put does on that your mean? Waffle. Waffle with black pudding and syrup? No, this is where you, this is your like, you're like a freaking, I don't even know. Yeah, you're like the ultimatum boy over no, here. No, Everything's no. got to be extreme. Yep. Yeah. Remember when we went to IHOP that one time? Yes, that was <laughs> we never couldn't even finish a... one order of yeah, pancakes. It's it's yeah, the International House of Pancakes. <laughs> we almost if, threw if you up. ever want to feel thin, I tell oh you what, my... that's the place to go. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I know you guys will find that this not very entertaining because you probably think it's normal, but one serving of pancakes, how do you finish that? I know, it was just this massive and it turned and into this syrup. mush. Of, like, <laughs> it was like eating yeah, gravel yeah, or it something. Was, it was ridiculous. Anyway, it was an experience. It was. I'm glad was. we did it. Even for me, that's culture shock. Yeah. Uh, free speech respecter. What, Winston, what do you think about Julius <laughs> Caesar? Well, he's not Caligula, I'll tell you that <laughs> oh much. Oh my God, do you remember when we tried to watch <laughs> that movie? We tried to watch that movie. Because you know, Caligula, everyone's like, oh, it's such a shocking movie. It actually is. It's, just... <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> we got like halfway through, we're like, look, we if we want to watch gay porn, we'll just yeah. watch gay porn. It's that simple. <laughs> it's a gay porn movie. Pretty much, yeah. 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 Amongst other horrific things, oh, though. Oh, it's terrible, The yeah. gay porn's one thing. The real, the other stuff is uh, different. Well, I mean, that it was obviously just made as a shock movie. That was yeah. the whole reason behind it. So. I couldn't get through it. No, it was just like, why why watch this, you know? Right. 
Uh, Christina Grissom, I know y'all haven't talked about it lately, but have you seen the movie One Child Nation? I have. It was very good. Great movie. Anyway, thanks for all the up-to-date news. Appreciate both of you guys. You're welcome to the East Coast. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, that was a good movie. One Child Nation. Watch it it if you can. Yeah. Uh, Tessa Turn, would you please try to become a guest appearance on American Party Podcast? I don't know what that is. Yeah, I mean, if we know what it is, we might. Uh, I have in C... Uh, the fact that Seamilk is kind of good at those PCP propaganda songs kind of bothers me. Ooh. Yeah. I'm a double agent Wumao. No, you used to sing them. See, what the, my plan is here is to tell you guys the truth about the CCP, but then I'll pull a 180 on you, and I'll be like, actually, all the propaganda is true. <laughs> sure. That's what I'm going to do. It's true propaganda. True propaganda. The account 25. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jordan Laramore, have you all listened to... Uh, the China and Africa podcast, I have I have seen that a little bit. They make really good content about how China interacts with Africa and the global south. It's it's a good show. Okay. Rip off Productions LLC. Zimok, I saw your video about Chinese colleges, but got to say the bit where you bleeped out the other guy's story about the old pervert professor kind of defeats the purpose of such story, unless YouTube forced that bleeping. So YouTube uh, said that it was shocking content and it was demonetized. So... What I can tell you is that he sexually assaulted one of the students. That's yeah. all I can say. I, there's no. Why do you need to hear what the sexual assault details are? Sure. It's kind of weird. You don't yeah. need to hear that. Yeah. Right. Um, but at that being said, I understand what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. And DJ, thank you for spotting the CCP shade in Squid Game. I uh, didn't realize something so small could but hurt but hurt the CCP. Oh, oh dude, oh, that's the where thinnest, you're wrong. <laughs> thinnest skin in the planet, on yeah. the planet, really. Love you guys. Uh, keep staying gang. So thank you very much, DJ. Uh, Dory, why so many bad things happened on 9/11, but one good thing happened. They brought the left and right together as Americans. Agreed. Yeah, and um, sometimes you need a terrible event like that to unify people. Mm-hmm. And you know what? What China's when I say China, the CCP is doing is terrible. A lot of the things that they're doing. And we need to unite against this. And it's to stop them from doing this. It's not to attack them as an enemy and No, it's in support of Chinese it's people. to stop them. The only way we're going to stop them is if we unify and we stand up to the crap that they're pulling everywhere. They're right. destroying the planet, for goodness sake. Never right. mind the fact that they're such a threat to just average Chinese people, too. Anyway, we'll get into that another time. Drazen Boy, mm-hmm. uh, much appreciate your work. Would ask you if you could stop calling China communist. It's just an authoritarian state. I agree. It's just authoritarianism. We've never had communism anywhere. True, but they call themselves the Communist Party of China. That's just yes. how we're going to say it. Correct. Tom Chenow, uh, two journalists from Russia and the Philippines, won the Nobel Peace Prize today for their fight for freedom of speech in their countries. Excellent. Are there any journalists trying to do this in China, or is it impossible? Yes, and those people were blacklisted by China. Yes. There was, was there been two Nobel free freedom of speech people now? Yeah, and yeah. I, I think it is. And every time the Nobel Peace Prize, the Nobel organization wants to award that kind of peace prize, huge uproar from the CCP. Yeah, they hate that. They hate the Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah. Hung Tran, well, they, they love it if it goes towards their agenda. Of course. All right. World Traveler 232, YouTube is censoring misinformation against vaccines. Why can't you guys petition them to censor thousands of propaganda videos uploaded every week? I agree. Yeah, they should. It's crazy what they do. If they're going to crack down on other things, they need to crack down on state government propaganda from and China. we got so many examples oh to give Oh, my God. Them. Oh, my yeah. God. Twitter does a pretty good job. These days, yeah. No, they do. They really do, though. They're yeah. on the ball about this stuff. But freaking YouTube. No, YouTube allows this drivel to come out, yeah. Hung Tran, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Uh, Julian Kolbus, not to stir the pots, but no self-respecting leftist likes the CCP. Absolutely. Then Winston didn't say that. Another commenter said that in yeah. the super chat. No, but I, I've spoken to a lot of very left-leaning people who champion the CCP, and yeah. I'm just that's, saying from my That's own, changing quite quickly. Yeah, that's from my own you know, personal right. experiences talking to people, because largely I find, especially in America, the, the majority of people are fairly ignorant when it comes to China, and they yeah. have this idea in their mind that's not reality. They, That's on both sides. I know. I, I'm saying, I've yeah. said people in general, not left or yeah. right, just people in general. I mean, a lot of people don't even know the difference between China and Japan. A lot of times, yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's like it's shocking. It's shocking. It's some of the yeah. some of the stupidity mm. in America is shocking. It's just I get it. If you grow up in this country, everything's yeah, kind yeah. of it's circles uh, around. It's, yeah. it's USA centric, and you kind of. You know, you don't really look outward. It's a lot like a, a lot of Chinese people. Yeah, it's true. If you go to China, a lot of people think, well, why? Like outside country, outside of China, is, yes. it's all the same. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, there's there were people in China where we could say we're Japanese and they'll believe us. Sure. I'm not even joking. Mm-hmm. Uh, authoritarianism is what we hate. Agreed. Um, a lot of people on the left are very much anti-CCP. 
yeah. siding between China and the U.S. is a false dichotomy. Mm -hmm. You can hate both. <laughs> from sure. Europe. Yeah, fair enough. Of course you can. Light seeker, Cotton. Yep, you were, you had that loaded up real quick. Yeah, I was, really, <laughs> was, I was ready for that. Right one. in the gun. Yeah, the ready barrel. for that one. Uh, light seeker, there are two types of people in this world: people who say they pee in the shower and dirty effing liars. <laughs> Louis C.K. I didn't know he said that. I, it must have been the back of my head, you know. Yeah. Uh, the Don. Oh my gosh! I apologize. You guys are gonna have to put up with this. There it is. Don't American bathrooms have baths? I uh, some yeah. of them. Depends. Some of them are just showers. Yeah, my place has a bath. Yeah, I have a bath. Yeah. Yeah. They're small though. Holy crap, are they small? Why is that that Dude, small? Dude, what is it with American toilets are tiny? Are they? Because like in general, they're those round mm. round ones. You know, the elongated yeah. ones are the ones that I'm used to from South oh, Africa. Oh, those are in public bathrooms in America. But like in your house, you've got these tiny they're little... Smaller, yeah. It's horrible. You're sitting here, junk's touching the edge of the freaking bowl down there. Not only that, okay? When the ball sack... Oh, when the oh, ball yeah. sack... When the, yeah. When the ball sack touches the toilet water? Yeah. <laughs> yes, oh, yes, my yes. Gosh. No, listen... There's something wrong because Americans are are large, okay, and they they obviously Speak go yourself. to the toilet a lot, okay. No joke, because they're like the large populace, and they're eating all this like. Because I eat the junk food here too, and I love it, but it makes me large, <laughs> yeah. okay. Fact of the matter is, you're eating the slop, right? Yeah. You, you would think that you have a wide toilet to accommodate. You would, you but would. But it's small. It's like. I don't know, a bulldog sitting on a tick, you know? It's just weird. I got to say something, though. When I went to Europe, it was the same. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. Very small circular toys, just like the U.S. What the hell's wrong with this stuff? It's like these little tiny things. I mean, like, like I said, I feel like never... massive, massive people will get different toilets put in their house. May maybe. You know? Yeah. Maybe it's just like a trough, you know, like... It's because we don't weigh 600 pounds. <laughs> That's true. Anyway, I just wanted We're to say... Away. It's kind of weird, because remember I bought that really nice, expensive Toto um, toilet... Washlet. Washlet thing. Yeah. It doesn't fit on the places, like, in, in, you know, it doesn't fit anywhere here in our new place. Like, it's all these tiny little toilets, and because it's for an elongated one. Yeah. It's so annoying. Yeah, I have a round toilet in my new place as well. Yeah. I've only had one of those not round ones. It yeah. was in an apartment. Yeah, when we were staying in that apartment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway. Hmm. Just wanted to say that. Tank Man says, Cotton, also Mr. Serp... Oh, no, oh, no. oh, we need one. Uh, Serpent said, hey, about your video, how the U.S. can fight back. You told us about an app that makes us look for goods. Um, is there one for phones, Cotton? No. <laughs> You're really getting your money's worth, yeah. Tank Man. Um, I don't know. Maybe that was uh, Cultivate. I presume that they will. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, the link for the app's in there. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, does that work on a phone? It does. Oh, Those okay. are app, there's app, apps. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, it's on the phone. Yeah, Of course, there's an Android and an iOS version. Yes. And they're expanding to and different Firefox. countries too because mm -hmm. they were kind of US-centric for a while, but now they're spreading out. So they keep evolving. That's right. The Count 25. Thank you very Thank much. You. Chinese ox. Ah, oh, no. Go away. <laughs> Good evening. It's the, I, don't like how, I don't like how polite he yeah, is. Yeah, he's too polite. He's very passive-aggressive. Yeah. yeah. Good evening. It's the year of the ox. I always picture him sharpening an axe or something. One of those meat cleavers. Yes. Yeah. That's what he has. It's the year of the ox, and I'm looking to a bet to better my life. Recommend a good place to live on the east coast of the USA, hoping to take business there. That's scary. Yeah, no one near us. Stop. Yeah. You go on the west coast. You yeah. can have our old place. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Chua, do you think you would survive Squid Game? Absolutely not. You don't know yet because you haven't no, seen it. I haven't watched games. enough of it. Yeah. You're going to finish it though, right? Yeah, I'll watch it. Okay. Yeah. You sound like you don't like it. No, I do. It's okay. just, I, I like, I do like it because I like that kind of thing. I told you that's, okay. I've watched tons of Japanese ones that are the same idea. Sure. And I like that. That's why I'm going to watch it. Okay, good. I normally stay away from Korean stuff because of crying men and swish hair, but this is a different story. Crying men and swish Dude, hair? That's I like, the way I like I like Old Boy. You still haven't watched that. Are you ever going to watch Old Boy? I will. Yeah, you got to watch it. You, yeah. you the guy who's like, ooh, Korean stuff's so great. Watch Old Boy. That's like something that I've I absolutely will. for ages. I will, for sure. Yeah, it's a really good one for back in the it. day. It's very yeah. disturbing. Yeah, well, I mean, so is Squid Game. So is good Squid Game. Is watch it? Old Boy. Oh, well, yeah. I will. I'll trade you. Okay. I'll watch Old Boy before the next show. Okay. We'll reconvene. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, Wad you still have to watch freaking Walk to Remember trailer. <laughs> it's, okay. it's a minute. Okay, yeah. We'll you make watch... me watch shit movie trailers all day. That's <laughs> yeah. his thing. Yeah. It's He'll be true. like, You ever seen this shit movie? I'm like, No, because I'm not South African and we actually <laughs> have real movies. Yeah. South Africans watch this like drivel because yeah, of all do. the sanctions and stuff. Correct. And it's only 10 years too late. Yeah. 
Anyway, Wadali's four son, CCP rewriting the 1979 Vietnam War. Vietnamese army launching an invasion and its Chinese, China counterpart acting in self-defense. TV series called Ace Troops. It makes sense. It was them that actually invaded Vietnam, believe it or not. Yeah, China you invaded Vietnam. You cannot believe the crap that the CCP tells the people of China. Right. They, they tell the people of China that they single-handedly defeated the Japanese, you know, right. for instance. It's ridiculous. Anyway, whatever. They're going to lie. <laughs> Somebody said Seamog's drinking invisibility. <laughs> I can I can one you up on that too. Look, I got invisibility too. Mm. You brought that old bottle with you. Eh? Yeah, that's so what happens when you got a uh, you got your nice little green bottle in front of a green <laughs> screen. A green bottle flu. Some B brown bottle BPA flu. BPA free, genuine. That's what you want. Mm. Uh, so, you know, nothing's going to give us cancer because we're not in California anymore. That's right. Have you noticed that... <laughs> What's it, Prop 65? Yeah. Whatever product you buy when you are in California, it has to have a warning label. It says, this material is known to cause cancer, blah, blah, blah. It makes me really happy that I don't have to worry yeah, about that. Yeah, you know, buildings, when you walk into a building, there'll be a placard or a sticker on the wall that says Prop 65, you know. Yeah, blah, what blah, blah, the blah. hell was that? Anyway. anyway, surreptitious, never peed in the shower. In a hot tub, yes, not a liar, mostly. That's worse! Because <laughs> it's bubbling around. Come on! What are you stewing in your own freaking piss soup? Yeah, it's what it is, isn't it? So it's like a public pool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, G Legos 22. Uh, would be interesting to see Australia turn the tables and embark up the CCP. Give the government a taste of their own medicine. That would be good. Me, yeah, I would agree. And tax the crap out of all the foreign investment of the properties if people aren't living there. Correct. Only if they're not living there. Yeah, of course. If you're immigrated and stuff, that's fine. <laughs> but if it's staying empty and driving up the property prices... You tax the shit tax, out tax of it. Tax like the entire value of the property yearly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Times two. Times two. Yeah. Gloria Moffat, thank you very much. Tessa Turn, Wuhan, Wuhan clan ain't nothing to F with. <laughs> sure. The Count 25. Thank you. Kimberly, thank you very much. Uh, John Blair, keep up the good fight, you boomers. Thank, thank you very you. much. Pi Burn, just tuned in, wanted to ask if seven of nine Milkos know who Balsack is. So, what? Oh, good old. Balsack. Maybe, I don't know. Seven of nine. Seven of nine. Uh, hi, guys. Just finished watching the K drama Vincenzo, and I'm hooked. Love you guys. Thank you very much for. T if you learned it from me, I'm flattered. Uh, Kimberly, it was a fantastic show. If you didn't, I'm still flattered. Yep. Uh, Ivan, Belgians invented French fries, for real. They, had, they did. That is fantastic invention. So why is like it called French fries, then? Belgians speak French. Uh, <laughs> call them freedom fries around here. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, especially around here. Yep. For real, greetings from South Africa. It's amazing to invent cutting a potato. <laughs> <laughs> you know what Don't I mean? Don't throw shade. I'm sorry. You like it. Of course, everyone likes French fries, but that's an invention of note, you know? <laughs> Cut a potato that way rather yeah. than just slice it that way. Because it was probably round before. You, you know? had those round chips. You can fry them the same. Yeah, you know? it's potato chips. What do they call home fries or something? Oh, oh home fries. Yeah. 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 People had home fries before they had French fries. They did then. Because you couldn't get them in the home no more. You had to go to France. Yeah. It's a fancy book a trip to Paris. Yeah. We, or we, Belgium. So yeah, Brussels. Fry. Yeah. Roman Reyes. When I traveled to China in 2000. I, and by the way, before everyone freaks out, I know that uh, people speak Dutch and Belgium as well. Mm -hmm. And some people speak German. Uh, Roman Reyes. When I traveled to China in 2016 to Beijing, Shanghai, and Yantai. Y A N T I I, my friend. <laughs> uh, four week trip. I remember, think, this is too good to be true. A spark of philosophical take take if something is perfect when they are human if someone is perfect when they are human uh, -huh. uh the count 25 alpha 101 you guys should consider using Streamlabs. labs uh, that's pretty pikey look i mean i know our setup is not the best i'm no, still because they don't I'm want us to lose our money okay yeah yeah we, we get it but we have to do th things through youtube because that's what we do we do it also YouTube. works the best Streamlabs yeah. is pretty pretty bad from what we tried yeah. jordan thomas is ccp threatening to nuke japan again oh they always do who knows they did the other day yeah uh, Ju Chinese Ox says, Julius Caesar film is my favorite and I dream about it often, not Sissy Pants dream. Please take back your opinion or be met with Chinese Ox manners. <laughs> okay, let's get a little bit of... Let count 25. Thank you very much. Marco Kane, Sea Milk, as your political commissaire, I advise you that your three-story haircut is <laughs> counter-revolutionary. Take this money and report for re-education. <laughs> re-education. <laughs> Seriously, though. Yeah, thanks yeah, for That's kind of funny. Um, I was going for the Shamate look. Right. I actually might do my hair like that one day when it's... That'd be kind of yeah, funny if you could. Yeah. Uh, I will not be dying at blonde, though. Mm -hmm. I have not see. I am watching your bioweapon video. Chinese dumpling ad popped up in the middle. Hey, I support <laughs> okay. Chinese dumplings all day. Awesome. I freaking love Chinese yeah. dumplings. I, I prefer gyoza, you know, the Japanese take on that. Um, I like both. 
Like, and the Korean dumplings are amazing. Those, those, are, are, those are the best. Yeah, <laughs> those probably are the best. Probably the Korean best. dumplings. You get those ones amazing. at Costco or whatever. Yeah. Those are so good. Uh, what's that brand? I can't remember, but Sasha gets them all the I, time. You know what sucks? We don't have them at Sam's Club. Yeah. Well, I mean. But memories can, at least. Well, we we'll get them delivered, them. dude. Costco delivers out here. I didn't get delivery from Costco. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> You'll have to hook me up with that. Dude, that this is, the US, this is the, the US of A. You can get anything mm -hmm. anywhere. Oh. Uh, I'm used to going to Costco. Sure. So. Sam's Club is almost as good. Yeah. They don't have that brand, though. No. David Brooks. Winston, you look like comedian Jack D from UK. Really? Right, bruv. I don't know who that is. Sorry. I, let's just look it up. Okay. I can humor this. Humor this nut. You, you don't, don't look anything like Do I look like, like Jack D? I'm all for making fun of you, but you look nothing I, like I that. mean, no, I don't think I look <laughs> like Jack D. Maybe if he was a bit younger. Yeah, I guess. Uh, the Count 25. Thank you. You should see the people that they say I look like. <laughs> I know. Holy shit. Yeah. At least that wasn't that bad. Right. During 1804, Stalin was Lenin's protege. Mm -hmm. Lenin was uh, Plekhanov's protege. Plekhanov was Engels' protege, and Engels was Marx's protege. There is a direct apostolic succession of Marxist, Marxist theory in the Soviet Union. It was real communism. Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, there are elements of real communism. Yeah. David Brooks, Asia seems to do a lot more dystopian TV shows now. They do. Mm -hmm. George Hazard, stay awesome. And you too. The Count 25. David Brooks, have you seen Alice in Borderland? That's yes. great too. We loved it. There's yeah, a new, actually, new season I, I recommended out. that to you, didn't I? Before, yeah, before yeah, that's this. a great show. I, I really can't wait for the it. second season. It'll yeah. be good. Yeah. Yeah. you got to cool. finish Squid Game. I will. I'm going to finish it. David Payne, just mm. in and out. Yes, I'm rubbing it in. Ah. Oh. <sighs> Stop. Yeah, we got to deal with what five guys over here. It's way more expensive. It's not as good. Uh, Cash Koi, have you discussed Taiwan versus Taiwan Ta China problem? <laughs> what? Have you discussed the Taiwan versus China problem? If not, will you discuss it in the future? Yeah. Only we'll maybe half we'll of our content. We'll consider it. I'll yeah. think about it. I'll think yeah. about it. If in all seriousness, you probably knew. Yeah. Um, you go through our catalog. You find plenty of videos about that. Yeah. Global product and gaming review. Have you been flipped off in public? We have actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you handle conflict with Chinese people? Not from Chinese people. I've been I've been harassed by uh, Shill in real life. Yeah, I no, I got flipped off by that Chinese lady that time when she rolled yes. down her window and she said shit. True. Because she didn't know how to insult me. I love the shit. <laughs> it's funny. That was shit. Just, because her um, husband or whoever was driving the car was driving like a complete ass, and I was on an electric scooter, and they don't treat bikes or scooters as part of the road in china i see i thought this guy was talking about america dude oh. in conflict with chinese people in china only a hundred times sure uh different 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 thing clarence yeah. mumford winston old boy was great mm -hmm. uh also watch a man from nowhere and breaker morant an australian movie they, as long as they don't say brecky and siggy and <laughs> stuff i'll watch it those names are familiar to me i don't know maybe i've seen them before i'll have to check byron zule zule uh, not much but have fun oh, thank either, you either way appreciate Doesn't it matter every every thank you so much send counts you have no idea how much your support helps us here um with the adv podcast especially when we get general. demonetized for yeah playing, you've got to run uh, yeah no seriously you keep us going and we appreciate it very much we also have a patron yeah um not for you for anyone that's interested it the can count, be for him too. Oh, it can be for him too. For anyone. The count twenty five. Is it dangerous for foreigners to visit China at the moment? I personally wouldn't. Yeah, um, it depends on who you are. Yeah, if you're if you have a social media presence and you've ever said anything about China, I would recommend yeah, not going. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Uh, Tank man says cotton. cotton. You, you ask and you shall receive. Mm -hmm. What can the average American do to make light of what's China doing and speed us up decoupling process? Cotton. Oh. Cotton. Well, Winston. I uh, made a video called How to Fight Back. Yeah, how, how to Fight Back Against the Communist Party of China. So, so on my channel, it's like from two weeks ago or yeah, something. Go, go take a look. Bit. It's got like this massive explosion behind me. You can't miss it. Uh, and that was not intentional? No, that was actually the, the CCP's one. We don't do that. No, it's the 100th anniversary of the yeah. CCP. They made that show, right? Yeah. Of all this and comedy stuff. And then hammer and sickle forge Yeah, and yeah. It's like it explosion explodes. and stuff. And it just so happened that uh, YouTube chose that as the thumbnail. Isn't and that I wasn't. I, I was. <clears throat> going to make a thumbnail but when i saw that i was like that's actually pretty good i'll just leave that we don't do these crazy like airplanes facing off in the sky thumbnails and explosions and stuff but that was very cool how youtube chose that one yes yes uh maxim stepanek my great great uncle saved over six thousand jews in, during world war ii latero be poisoned in prison by the yugoslav government not later collaborator. Two. oh later, later two. two i'm sorry later yeah. to be poisoned in uh, prison by the Yugoslav government, Nazi collaborator. He is now a national hero. Wow, oh, that's wow. pretty cool. That's interesting. Um, 
something to be proud of yeah visiting earth winston uses a foam toilet seat that no that's, that's an insult <laughs> though people that use foam toilet seats i'm not throwing shade but you need to see a doctor dude like it stays warm like but from someone's ass warm no no i mean did, did you ever have you ever been to like a grandparent's house or something where they've got that like crochet the furry the thing. furry thing on yeah the, like a, oh. like a shag carpet yeah, yeah like on dude, the toilet it's so what are you terrible. doing old people that that's do that all, how only dirty, old people that do how that. dirty is that God, can I can't imagine because like shit and piss particles fly in I the mean, air. I mean, whatever. Just it's awful. Don't have that furry stuff. You have to like vacuum. <laughs> I don't even know. I feel like just my grandma. Do it. That's my why these Japanese that. toilets are fantastic. And there's a um, because I didn't have an elongated one. I actually got a cheaper one now. So Brondell is the brand. I think it's Brondell, which is an American-made brand where they just make the Japanese-style toilets. They're so good because they're heated. And they're cheap. Yeah, they're like two hundred bucks. They're or way cheaper than the Japanese. Yeah, the one. Japanese ones are like a. Grand they're cool they're, both they're, are they're great amazing. both are great but yeah it's like 200 bucks called brondel and the brondel is just as good yeah it's just as good yeah and it's got the heated seats does the whole cleaning Sound thing like drying thing no but it's like people that haven't used it think it's weird and gross but when you use it you're like you'll never go back i've had so many conversations people like no and then they use it and right. then they're like whoa it just changed my life you know because it's got like not use it's got that. a deodorizer in it when you sit on it it's uh, pretty you can't not use it no 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 it's like afterwards you're like what is this low-tech crap what are we in the middle ages yeah seriously i feel like a freaking peasant if i don't have one yeah, of those exactly yeah they're like a couple hundred bucks yeah shooter down under uh can i request a video exposing the lies regarding the green energy lies in china we actually, yeah, have, we a actually have a video called, called exposing the green energy well, lies china's green oh. energy lies on ADV China is quite old, so we need to do an update. But if you watch Still that, relevant. you will. Yeah, it's very relevant. Go, go, take a look. We filmed it in Taiwan. Yeah. Uh, Jun Siu says, first time catching this live. Mm -hmm. Keep up the great work, and please keep us informed about the CCP hashtag Taiwan number one. You betcha. Taiwan number one. Mm -hmm. The count twenty five. Thank you very much. Syrupitisus. Don't look now, but the USA is becoming a low trust society. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's still got a long way to go. Yeah, very, 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 very long way. Yeah, it, to compared like to China, China. it's, it's, it's going to take like 100 People years. People are, by and large, nice yeah. that I meet. Absolutely. Uh, click all night. I enjoy and support your opinions about China, but Sam's not is not almost as good as agree. Bosco. I agree. It's okay. I agree. I've got to agree. You've only been once. Yeah, but i got to agree. Like, Costco's better. Okay, I'm just trying to make excuses because yeah. I kind of miss it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been in response to another super chat. I can't go to China, even though I've been there hundreds of times. Deleted WeChat even because I had Winston as a contact and received some Chinese wanted message. I don't recommend it. Can you please reach out about that? We would love to see. A yeah, that's, that's my about. old buddy from South Africa. Oh, cool. Can you can he send that to you? Yeah, yeah. he's got your contact. Yeah, right? he does. Okay, because I want to know what the your wanted message is like. Yeah. Uh, Vil Voss, just got my paycheck. Bioweapon video is terrifying. Stay awesome, gang. Yeah, thank you for that. Wow, we've actually reached the end of our questions and kind of in a timely fashion today. Yeah. That's pretty pretty fantastic. Thank you for sticking around. Thanks, guys. Seriously, this is, um, it's been an interesting one and a very important one again. Uh, it's always good to have a conversation with all of you. Let me move this microphone. Um, it's definitely the highlight of our week, having this live yes. show. Best um, part of the week. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for everyone who supported us. Uh, someone said, what, Peter uh, who? Gotta agree with Pro Jared. Isn't that that weirdo dude? I don't know who that is. Anyway, uh, Final Fantasy VI is hardcore fan's best game. Uh, it's my second favorite. Mm -hmm. Final Fantasy VII is the most important game, probably. Final Fantasy IX is the best game in the Final Fantasy series. That's my third favorite. Final yeah. Fantasy VIII, we both agree, is the best. Yes. Um, and Square says, Peter who? Yeah, you got it. You know, Peter Balsack, Peter Dazak, who's very largely responsible for COVID spreading throughout the world. Don't forget his name. Don't forget his face. Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I, like I was saying, guys, thank you so, so much for joining us and supporting us. It means a hell of a lot to us. We've got some very important stuff coming. Uh, Seamilk's video that was released this morning, super important about the bioweapons thing. Educate yourself on that. Go watch his video. Um, my thing about the housing stuff, check it out. If you're interested, very it's important. Also too. important. Um, the count 25. Thank you very much. So, yeah. And also, don't forget Monday we've got a fantastic ADV no, China episode never coming out. Seen. Yeah. Completely like it's it's going to be a, a good one. We can't yes. wait for you to see it and uh, uh, get some feedback on that. Correct. Anyway, that's it. Yeah. So um, yeah, I guess that's it. Time for us to sign off. Time for you to cut yourself off. No, I'm not going to cut myself off this time. Oh, not know? this time. Right. This time I'm going to count to ten. Okay, so one.